Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Easy Allies Hall of Greats. How's it going? It's been a while since we had one of these. Mm, yeah. It's been a while. Been a while. <laughs> but it is time. Get a game back hand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Tonight's uh, the night. Yes. We've got uh we got eight allies who will be presenting eight different games for consideration for admission to the Hall of Greats. Only two get in. Uh, the two with the most chips at the end will be our new inductees into the Easy Allies Hall of Greats. Um, you probably have a lot of questions about how things will be going down this time. It'll be mostly similar. Uh, instead of tarot cards, we have a wheel of names that will be deciding the order of the presentations this time. Uh, instead of physical chips, because we are being good people and practicing social distancing, we will be doing a Google submission form with virtual chips. Uh, at the end, when we do our confessionals, all the allies will... Uh, go to a Google form and uh, type in their submissions. You won't actually see that part of it. It'll still be pretty much the same as before, where they just tell you the three games that they're giving chips to, but won't actually tell you uh, how many chips they're giving to each game. Um, anything else I'm forgetting here? I feel like there's a lot to always go over with five these. Minutes, five minutes, five minute presentation, five minute cross-examination. Uh, we have to play devil's advocate. So if somebody's saying some foolishness about a game that may or may not be their actual thoughts right. if it's me i hate everything mm -hmm. just straight up if and somebody <laughs> if somebody so brought, angry if somebody brought resident evil 2 i would be honor bound to yeah. try to criticize it to trash that <laughs> yeah. honor bound i like that i like that huber uh, uh we will not be uh I am only monitoring chat to make sure the audio levels are good. So let me know how the audio sounds throughout the presentation chat. Uh, though I did sneak a peek, uh, or was it check a look at a, a suggestion? Check a look. Maybe check for next a time. Look. Check a look. <laughs> uh, next time, maybe if we're still doing social distancing, maybe we do the presentations in Animal Crossing format. Also, Yo! if a game gets if a game gets zero votes, it is banned for yes. one year. Oh, that's correct, Man. Huber. <laughs> that if no, if a game receives zero chips, they will go into a year long a temporary ban. Was there ever a thing if they happened twice, they're perma banned or something like that, or we never? I don't know, so. bro. No, has, no perma bans. <laughs> no also, new bans. rule: if your game gets banned, you also have to leave Easy Allies for one year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 Come yeah. back. You know, after you've done your penance, <laughs> you can't if, shave. You have to come back like yeah. like you've been on the mountain for. If you if you want to uh, learn how to get your game banned, ask me. I'm really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Expert. Another. Uh, actually, I don't know if Don's had that many bans. He's That's had a couple. Enough. Actually, only a I've couple. Had a couple. <laughs> He's had a couple. I've had a couple. Anybody got uh, no bans? Anybody banless? No, I had FTL banned. Who are the banless? Yeah. I, I, I shouldn't I remember say this blood before we have a banned. presentation, but I don't think I've had any band. Yeah, I don't know if I have. Challenge accepted. Damiani, yeah. thank you so much for setting all this up. Yay! Yes. A, um, a tricky thing, something that custom made for our studio, custom made for the garage. So, not yeah. Not custom made whatsoever for our current Zoom setup. Uh, obviously, it's very likely we might be doing the next one of these also in similar circumstances. So, at the conclusion of all this, please give us your feedback for suggestions how to improve this uh because there's a lot of variables in this that are kind of hard to make one fits all set up so whatever we have here hopefully you enjoy it but we will definitely try and improve it um with your suggestions going forward and we tried to emulate as much as we could that's why we have eight camera shots right now to emulate the feel of everyone being on the couch yeah. uh we will have a zoomed in or a sorry a single shot for the confessionals so you just get one ally talking head zoomed in on that shot um the video presentations there are some uh we'll have that uh there will no, be no visual there will no be no cameras for that for this time just because it was going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt to get eight people with that on there but we might rework that at some point in the future anyway the first thing we gotta do is figure out who is going first so i'm gonna cut over to our wheel of names uh <laughs> scene here right now so as you can see here is the wheel of names um uh oh Whoa. i hear i hear oh, the cat music. someone play the, the cat, cat music the who cat did that started. i gotta i gotta go We're back together started. <laughs> i gotta stop i gotta stop <laughs> that now <laughs> I, have to, I, I, I must now video. stop that it was ben? <laughs> <laughs> I someone started the cat video <laughs> plays it for all I of us that's how we got and i heard it, it. yeah that's a good video man though yeah. I, I, like it. It. I did that 
All right. <laughs> <You> should... <laughs> mental damage. Mental damage. For, that was that was a good one to have. Uh, so I, I I guess I click this to spin. So are you ready? It's the same yeah. thing as Left for Dead, man. You just Ben just drops cats in. I clicked it to spin. <laughs> really uh, let's see where the I wheel ends up thing. on. And our first presenter is of course Damiani. Oh, I'm assuming it stops. Yeah. Oh, so we have. Oh, I'm a winner. Look at this. <laughs> okay, so now I remove myself from the list. All right, let me go to uh, the transition scene really quick. These are our past winners for the Hall of Greats chat. Uh, um, one sec while I get my shot set up for all of this. Sorry. Preview editor. I think I got like two and a half of those in. Nice. Yeah. Resident Evil 4 uh, doesn't count because I did it for Brad or that's something. That's half points. Oh, man. Half yeah. points. <laughs> you ain't going to do time? How are we doing the timer? Oh, yeah. Let me, uh, I can just do it on my phone. You'd be okay. wrong if Ian That's what we usually time. do. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Wrong one. Sorry. I think we should, we should overthink it. Yep. We should do something weird. Tommy, can we have some kind of like text overlay for the clock? Can that just uh, tune in? Uh, maybe like, can it, can it move? Can it move around the screen like a screensaver? You know how they kind of bounce around there the edges go. and stuff, and like and never hit the corner. Can it change colors? Can it just vary between the colors of the rainbow? All right. Mm. He's, he's working on something. I'm working on stuff, so I'm kind of ignoring you right Ignored. now. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, just, just kind of ignoring. Here, here we go. So here is me. I'm a little loud. Let me get that down right there. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me get my. I have a, a, a script I will be reading from. Oh. So I wrote mine out. So, I mean, you're going to be able to tell with me zoomed in that I'm clearly reading from something. So, if your well presentation opens with a buster sword, do you have my votes? <laughs> no. Uh, so, I, I do apologize Noted that you're not. For the future, though. I do apologize you're not seeing the allies' reactions right now. The. the this, was, this is the tricky part. This is not part of the presentation. But as you can see, uh, this type of there there might be a way to work around this that i can figure out chat but hopefully you are cool with just this you're seeing the presenter like this otherwise i will look at the feedback if you overwhelmingly hate this and want us to show all eight of us regardless of who's speaking i can go back to that but we'll try this we'll try this first but hate so. it in a way that's loving you know what i mean yeah. like it's yeah, okay yeah, to yeah. hate a thing just don't just all right uh sorry ian you were timing correct i don't have a timer on here well I'll that's for next time whenever you start uh all right here we go there were some who thought konami was done with the metal gear franchise with the release of guns of the patriots but they were wrong the company once known for actually making video games turned to one of the most respected developers of our time in an effort to elevate the series to heights previously thought unimaginable <laughs> after years of labor and love the union between Konami and Platinum Games produced a game too good for this reality. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. What's great is that Konami didn't abandon the series' outlandish style at all. The oddball fan service you associate with, the, with Metal Gear is present and accounted for in Revengeance. The writing definitely has its moments, complete with legendary performances, <laughs> masterful one-liners, and of course, insane set pieces. Revengeance's plot is self-indulgent to the extreme, but like its predecessors, predecessors, it's not above making fun of itself. Never forget, Nano Machine, son. <laughs> on the surface, Platinum's spin on the Metal Gear franchise looks familiar and is sure to draw comparisons to developers' other works. More so than in either of those other work or any of those other works. Sorry. You initially feel like a powerhouse in Revengeance as you brutalize soldiers, robots, and all manner of crazy cyberkinetic, cybernetic monstrosities. Combat is simple and polished, but there's a level of depth lurking beneath the surface for those who enjoy exploring that sort of complexity. To a degree, this is still a game about racking up huge combos, but its unusual yet expertly implemented mechanics make it feel genuinely new. But and I'm hearing cat uh, music uh, right now. Please stop hitting play on the cat video. Uh, okay. That was not, uh, me. That was not me. <laughs> it's all about the blade mode, a mechanic that slows the action down and allows you to hack your foe to pieces with fine precision. By slashing through parts of enemies marked by red boxes, you can perform a Zidatsu move that instantly replenishes Raiden's health and blade mode meter. 
The game is full of enticing Zendatsu opportunities. Each one as satisfying as the next. It's one of the greatest dopamines in gaming. Whereas similar games like to dial up the challenge by requiring, co requiring complex combo strings with intricate button inputs, Rising is all about the timing. Defensive maneuvers like blocking, dodging, and parrying are just as crucial as your offensive attacks. And it's in those elements that the game rewards you for mastering its system. Hey, there's tutorials and VR missions to teach you the basics, but the real learning comes from observing enemy patterns and tells and being patient. The game also offers five difficulty settings from the get-go that cater to all skill levels. So I'll hear none of those. It's only got normal or easy settings available from the get-go. Try playing on Revengeance vanilla style and then talk to me about difficulty. Though the story can be completed in a few hours, the game is very good at continually dangling carrots. Whether it's unearthing collectibles like new outfits, yo, sombrero, Improv uh, improving your rankings to enhance Raiden's abilities, or unlocking the various VR missions, there's a lot you will definitely miss out on on your first playthrough. It's easy to get the feeling that Raiden favors the head-on approach, but it is a Metal Gear game after all. In a way not dissimilar to the Arkham games, Revengeance man manages to competently weave stealth elements into the experience without wrecking its pacing. Apart from the simple pleasure of stalking and dispatching your prey, lots of secondary objectives require a stealthy approach. So it does not abandon its stealth origins. Perhaps not surprisingly, it's the boss encounters that steal the show. As One a minute. rule, the huh? Oh, the boss One fights minute. run across multiple phases, involve varying attack patterns that will throw you through a loop, requiring swift mental reflexes alongside manual dexterity. When you finally hit on the solution for a phase that's been stumping you, the feeling of accomplishment is immense. If there's anything to lament, it's that there are relatively few of these types of encounters in the game. Metal Gear Rising is an amazing action game that offers a level of, exact, of exacting fidelity that few can match. The short length isn't a detractor. You'll definitely come back for seconds, given everything it has to offer. It's absolutely criminal. We're likely to never see a sequel to this masterpiece. 15 seconds left. You good? Oops, let me go to the transition. Yeah, let me set up the... I have to reset up the scene <laughs> real quick. Sorry. Uh, uh, unpin. Chat seemed like they just wanted all eight anyway. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, do you guys want the one minute warning or no? Yeah. Yes, I just yeah. misheard because yeah. I was being dumb. Yeah, you were in the moment, bro. But... You were feeling it. All right, let me come back to Passion. live. Yeah, uh, let me sit that there. All right, so we just want to go with the all eight, no, no focused shot yeah, for presentation. I think, I think for this part, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Make it easy on you, bro. Cool, cool. That makes it much easier. Easy Thank mode, you. just all like right. revenge. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Uh, that's burn. only a joke because you said it. I don't know anything about that yeah. game. <laughs> but that's what that's what you're thinking of when somebody's doing a presentation. You're just loading up your the ammunition, loading up your six uh, shooter. Shall yeah. we begin the cross examination phase? Yes. We shall. Uh, I have I have one to start, so I'll start the timer. Uh, I need to know if has its moments. The story has its moments is good or bad. <laughs> <laughs> I should. Did you I'll mean over... that as a positive? I meant that as a uh, as a positive. I should have elaborated better in the script there. Uh, what I meant to say is it has moments that are some of the greatest moments in video game history, oh, while okay. the rest of it is just like very good. To, like it, it's a good it's a good story for what it is, but there are moments that just like you can only get here. You can only get them from this, and they blow away. You know how insane Metal Gear the Metal Gear series is with stuff. Mm -hmm. This is just like pranks it up to like a thousand. Like not even close. Snake's is, Snake's ashamed of the stories he has to be a part of compared to this. <laughs> uh, Tommy, Ami, on that note, the Metal Gear series, you know, one one through four, and, and Phantom Pain, of course, but this was pre Phantom Pain. But Guns of the Patriots is the culmination of this story of this franchise, like all the events leading up to that. And then Revengeance is just a completely different tone and in a sense, kind of devalues everything that came before it because, like, Raiden is just this superhero killing machine dispatching Metal Gears like they're nothing. Yeah, he definitely uh, didn't do that in 4. 
not <laughs> not to this degree not even close to this uh oh, that's, that's what, do you, what do you have to say damiani this is an example huber of konami being cowards this was a game that was meant to be a passing of the torch and you know what snake story did conclude in guns of the patriots snake is no longer a part of the story but the world isn't safe and Raiden is stepping up and taking on the crazy crazy villains that have come into play in a world that like snake snake couldn't handle some of this stuff someone has to be there and you know what Raiden Raiden's growth through the series from two to four with him fighting with Vamp and showing elements of like his trajectory to getting these powers to getting these cybernetic enhancements, I think, I think this was uh, Huber. Honestly, this was meant to be a passing of the torch game. This should have been where the series went to. In fact, I would have preferred a Revengeance two to the Phantom Pain because the Phantom Pain throws so many different wrenches into the works. But you know that's a story for another day. Raiden's story should have continued. We should have gotten more Metal Gear Ventures, and going in a different direction would have been good because they'd done so much great stuff with stealth. Why not take it in a different direction? You know, blending action and stealth. Man, there could have been a, a universe where the Metal Gear Rising series became like the Arkham of like Metal Gear or something. Such a missed opportunity. And like, that, that's no fault of Revengeance. Revengeance clearly set the foundation for that. And you know what? Not every game needs to embrace all the past lore either. I think it tips its hat, hat enough, but sometimes you need to bring in a new audience and start a little bit fresh. And having all that convoluted mess of a storyline with Metal Gear Solid, I think you don't need to bring that baggage. Sick. Uh, Damiani, great pick. Uh, I think my only <clears throat> major problem with Revengeance is you're right that it is highly replayable and you'll want to replay it because that's how good it is. But I do think there's something to be said for that first playthrough. I think Revengeance could stand to just be a smidge longer. I think, I think it, it feels like there are moments where it's just starting to get its momentum and then it ends. And the ending is incredible. One of the best parts, if not the best parts, part of the game. But I think it could have just been a smidge longer. I definitely could have taken more. I, I would have loved an increase in the length of the game. I absolutely agree. And I think on a first playthrough, it does probably leave you feeling want like you want more that there should have probably been a little bit more i even said like in the script i even said like boss encounters there definitely was room for at least one or two more of those in that game like it, it, it could definitely have more so if there are shortcomings i will concede like they they could have put a little bit more in there also i think they should have made hard the, the normal difficulty um normal still pretty decent but like hard is like the sweet spot i think for anyone who's ever touched an action game as well so i i definitely agree with you ben it's probably it's like the one big weakness it has but man like replaying it i think the game lends itself so well to replayability because of that shorter length it's not so much of a trek to get back through each time to like unlock the new abilities and like challenge harder harder difficulties as well um also real quick ben your audio is a little low so can you boost it up when you get a chance i didn't want to waste time in my answer with that <laughs> boost. boost yeah i can try that six seconds left anybody got a quick one boost it that's it. Rules You're in for cross-examination. Nice job, Damiani. Nice job, Damiani. Woo, that's... I think you're a little that's, loud, Ben. Let's, let's, let's get this... Yeah, let's get this figured out real quick. That's boosted. <laughs> that is boosted, though. Rules of Nature! Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that fit perfectly. <laughs> Jack's back. Oh, yeah, Let her rip. Jack the Ripper. I don't remember why he was like that. Bloodlust, dude. But like, why? I don't remember. Was it the Nam machines? I don't remember like anything from that, that game. Before, Everything in the right? game is is just the it's, machines. I, yeah. I don't know if we're allowed to keep talking about this yellow card, but there is there is a reason. <laughs> There's a lore reason. Oh, okay. Anyway. You can't talk about it. Yeah, anymore, but I can't Alas. give it anymore. Nam All right. Uh, is my audio too boosted still. I think yeah, you're good now. good now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me go to the transition real quick, and let me get the the <laughs> wheel set up. Do 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 do. That All rules right. of nature Ben was great. It like <sighs> peaked so hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's spin this wheel. I think I just clicked to spin again. Hopefully that works. Here we go. Do 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 do. Our next presenter is going to be. Is it Hubert Jones? Oh my god, it's so close. Wait, wait. Oh, that's fine. Okay, it says Jones is next. Wow, okay. okay. Uh, give me a 
It was. Right it on landed the line exactly on the black line between two. Uh, I always two. wondered if that was possible. That's incredible. I wish I could have seen it. <laughs> I mean, okay. Nice. Uh, give me a sec, Jones. Uh, let me come back from this, uh, and I'll come back to our shot. Like father and son. Okay, so uh, we'll stick with this eight-shot uh, format for this, since you're not you're not doing a video, right, Brandon? I'm not. Okay, just double checking. I'm just talking. Cool. Just, just talking. Talking about games. All right, we are ready. Games. Cool. Your timer ready? Whenever you begin. Well, I'm beginning right now. Hit that timer, baby. Time I today time. am going to talk about a game that was previously brought to Hall of Greats. Mr. Daniel Bloodworth loved this game so much, he chose to just play music from this game. I will not be playing oh. any music. Hopefully this music still sticks with you. Uh, for I can talk about this game very much from the heart because Journey always will have a very special place in my heart. I, Journey's not a game I would have brought to like the first Hall of Great. I think we're getting to the point where I do think it's time. I do think that there's space for a game like this. I think this game has aged terribly well this is one of the games if there was like a museum of games where you just walk through you wouldn't touch them you would just admire something from the distance i would definitely want journey to be in there uh as somebody who's actually been actively practicing meditation for like the last decade journey is meditation as a video game like it's i always get extremely emotional i always get very invested when i play the game and it's fascinating to me because like revengeance it's not a very long game it's a game you can play in a short amount of time but it is a game uh, that does invite you to come back and, and play it multiple times uh, if you want to. You can be good at Journey, but you don't have to be. It is fairly linear. You, they do give you space to discover things and to do things differently, but it, it does obviously point you in one specific direction. There is a, a satisfying conclusion to it, but it is some somewhat of a linear game. But at the same time, there's things you can collect. There's a certain amount of platforming prowess you can have in the game that feels good, will make you look good, and because there's a co-op nature to it, there is a, there's a teaching you can do to your co-op partner and a showing off that you can do, but none of that is required. Like, you don't have to play the game with another person. And so there's just a lot of freedom emotionally and just kind of like how the game is designed that lets you play it in a lot of different ways. And it's not like all of those function. All of those are still incredible. I think you can still have a really impactful experience with the game. Um, just there's one part where you go super fast and there's one like... Uh, little tiny sparkly thing that you grab right in the middle of like the sur the sand surf area and it's just such a specific thing that not only do you have to like remember where it is but it's actually kind of even the second time I played it I'm like I gotta remember to get that one in the middle and I still missed it, it was like oh damn it but you don't need to get those at the same time it is rewarding if you collect all of them you get a nice prize for it but um, I've played the game on PS3 I bought it again on PS4 I played it recently on PS Now I don't think this is a game that necessarily when you downgrade it, and yes, I will call PS Now a downgrade, but it still, I was able to find a co-op partner right away. I still got emotional playing the game. And so I think that's much like in like World of Warcraft or something that was dated in a way to still be passable so many years later. I think it is a kind of a game visually that stands outside of time. I think the co-op is absolutely fascinating. It's one of the rare co-op games that doesn't get in your way at all it's kind of it's almost impossible to and so it's been interesting over the years playing that game with so many different types of co-op partners and trying to understand what's going on in their mind playing the game in a way that a lot of games i thought would copy journey since journey came out and they have not uh i could go on and on and talk about the music but i think all of you can picture the music in your head i think it's one of the best gaming soundtracks of all time won the uh, game award i believe that year or the video game award um I get emotional I play Journey because I think partly the music just elicits that from me. But to me, I remember first playing it and being like, well, what was that about? Like when I was done, I'm like, I go back to the beginning, what? And I think, obviously the, the name suggests this, but I think Journey is just kind of not only about a start and stop, but like the recycling of that concept, like getting up in the morning and going to bed at night, you know, like starting a project, ending a project, you know, like seeing a friend and then saying goodbye to a friend, like all of these things that we undertake, knowing that we're going to do them again, once we just kind of accept the, you know, in some ways, the mundane nature of life, but can still celebrate these things beginning and ending. And so having played Journey like seven or eight times, I don't get sick of it, but also that the message I think of the game, the way the game affects me emotionally, hasn't really subsided in all that time. And so it's interesting having this game that like made me weep the first time I played it. Uh, and not for reasons why I'm like, well, I wept because that guy died. I wept because, you know, I thought I was going to learn more about that character or that truth would be revealed. I wept just because I was just kind of filled with 
emotion, you know, and it just kind of like I was a Play-Doh machine. It just kind of oozed out like of, you know, my eyes and ears. And um, I just think it's a very well-crafted game. And I think, uh, for, uh, you know, aside from all of the reasons that I've stated when it comes to Hall of Greats, there's just not a lot of levies, criticisms you can levy, I think, against this game because I think it's, you know, just the right amount of development, the right amount of playtime, the right amount of choice, uh, story. There's no dialogue in the game, which is so impressive, even in 2020. I think it was the, the right game, the right time, and I think it stands the test of time. And I love seven it. seconds journey. left. Take them. <laughs> nice. Take those seven seconds and, and breathe just to yourself. We'll give them to Dawn. The journey. <laughs> I will begin the timer for cross-examination whenever someone starts a question. All right. Uh, most common criticism of this game is its short duration. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to hear you uh, talk about how you feel about its length, Jones, a little bit more. I mean, I would just compare it not against longer games because I think when you talk about short games in general, it's kind of like Resident Evil 3 comes to mind, you know, a game where you like, when you're first done with it, you're like, damn, that was short. And then you like play it six more times and you're like, oh, I get what they're going for, you know? And I think it definitely stands on the, the, the press, you know, the very, very top of all of those games in my brain as far as like, yeah, it's kind of short. It's like, it was, that's not a mistake. Like, I don't get a short vibe of like, man, they didn't get enough money or they wanted to spend more time with this. It's like, no, that's exactly as long as maybe, you know, it's like not to get too deep or like huberish about it, but like maybe as long as games need to be not in, not in the whole of like, Last of Us Part Two was too long kind of argument, but just, I was surprised in the same way when I finished first finished Portal, I'm like, whoa, I didn't know you could accomplish that in that amount of time. And I think, I, I, I don't think I've ever played through Journey and been like, that should have been longer, that should have been shorter. I kind of always have, I'm always a little sad whenever you drop down into the little like dark area below. I'm like, oh no, I was having so much fun surfing, you know? And then like, it's so great when you get out of it. It's just like, kind of like how RPGs are structured in a way of leveling you. It's like, there is an emotional science to like when you get those various achievements. And I think they, I just imagine that went through so many different cycles of them trying to figure out exactly how that timing would work. And I think they nailed it. Uh, Jones, you talk about uh, co-op. And one of the things uh, I think about, particularly when I think about Huber and co-op is, you know, the idea with playing with a friend and Journey kind of goes against that. You, you, yeah. you, you intentionally play with strangers, but do you think it's a, a fault that, there isn't an option play at the friend, even on like a second second play. No, I th because I think you could potentially, and I've seen this online. I've seen like people have gone through that game not even knowing what's happening. Like they don't even know it's co op. And so I think some games, the way that stuff is structured, if it follows a specific genre, it's like this is so disappointing because I'm just used to this type of gameplay experience. It's got to work this kind of way. And what I think is so clever about what they achieved is they took this like big risk in terms of designing the game in that way and, and just putting up these clear walls of like, it just does not work this way. It only works this one specific, you know, uh, just co-op, just teaming up with somebody. But at the same time, it's not, there's no way this person can hold you back. There's no way they can cr crash your game or break your game. If they stop playing in an instant, we've accounted for that, you know? So it's, it's interesting to have something that adds value to the game, but doesn't prohibit you from doing something. It's something you sign up for. There's no, mo there's no menu option, you know? And so I, I kind of like that straightforward sense that it's not just another thing they wanted to tack on the game, like it is the game, like it is the, the very nature of like the concept that they wanted to pull off. Do you think, I'm, 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 try, I'm not even sure if this is a question. It's like a feeling I have about this game. Cause this is sort of what happened to me is like, I had heard it was the greatest, most emotional thing ever before playing it. Mm -hmm. And that really neutered it for me. Mm -hmm. Like I still loved it. It was still amazing, but like, it just didn't hit me. Like, like you said, it really affected you emotionally and it didn't really do that for me. I think because it got parasited where it's like parasites, mm -hmm. the best film of the year. It's the greatest thing of all time. And you see it and you're like, yeah, it's really good. Uh, do you think that um, putting it in the hall of greats would be doing it a disservice because it would do that to people? <laughs> it's been too long. Maybe if it was a decade or so ago, I don't know. I would feel bad. I'd be like, no, no, no. We've got to keep it as a, a treasure thing. <laughs> it is interesting because it won so many awards and yet it is kind of like this eclectic art house thing, you know, where it's, um, I could see it. I, I think they were, again, there's a lot of, there's a lot of risk involved with this game. There's just a lot of weird stuff that they did 
And I think that's kind of the price that you naturally have to pay for like something like that. I, I just, there's a lot of movies I can think of that, you know, artistically I love, but it's just like, I just had too much going on in my head before yeah. I saw it. And it really took a third or fourth viewing before I was like, oh, and, and even then it was like, I probably will still not enjoy that as much as I could had I just like, what's this thing, you know, and just kind of wandered in. But um, hey, at least like uh, Damiani said, it's, it doesn't, you know, doesn't take too long to get through it, you know, right. at least you're not stuck. That's the other thing about the length is I think I think every uh, situation kind of gets you excited for the next one, you know. So like it, 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 you know, they do a good job of you always wondering, okay, if this is the part I'm in right now, I wonder what happens when I get through it. Um, and so I think that, um, and then you're done, you know. And then it's just like, you know, it's a kind of game. It's kind of show that you're like, I'm happy to watch that again. And then once you get 40 minutes through a movie that you love, you're like, well, damn, I gotta watch the whole damn thing now. Uh, that's kind of the way it is for me. It's just like um, a lot of the parts remind me of the better parts. Mm -hmm. um brandon mm. I, when journey came out it certainly deservedly got a lot of awards and i think kind of reducing why it was time oh man <laughs> <laughs> what you could have told i was actually looking to you <laughs> <laughs> i stole that question from you ben. ben you and i will pick up after hog is over okay i want to continue yeah. <laughs> it was a good question too. I know. It, it, felt, it felt like a good question I wanna... yeah man all right, All right. Uh, well, journey's let me banned. Get a, let me get no the train. <laughs> I lost that. Thanks that's again. the question that would have saved it. Yep, yeah. that's the question. Uh, let me go to transition real quick and uh, get the wheel dun, set back dun, dun, up. Dun, the wheel. The wheel. Again, you're like, what I love the, is the like Ian winners. knew how much time was left, too. Yeah, no, I know. It's, that was, it well, was deliberate. Did, it was deliberate. My question was a little <laughs> long, but Jones went on. Yeah. About yeah. It. Oh, I could feel the five minutes. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, it's, it's a good. It's ben, a good it was my. I should have said something. If you can, can say I can something, feel yeah. Five minutes. Yeah, good strat. I'm, I'm just terrible with point blank string. answers that's on anything. The... All right, I'm gonna spin the wheel now, and spin our it. next presenter will be. It's gonna be another close one. Brad. Oh uh, shit! So give me <laughs> one second. Here we go again. Here we go. Get, I gotta get Brad set up real quick, chat. So hang on. Yeah, I will give you the signal, Damiani. Uh, can everyone else who? Oh, uh, the allies, not the chat. Uh, can the allies? Can you minimize your watch together link real quick? So oh, sure, 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 sure. I can queue sure. up uh, Brad's video. Nice. I'll just take this opportunity to go and look at store.roosterteeth.com slash product slash easy dash ALS dash robot dash T dash shirt. <laughs> what do you find you there? you can buy this <gasps> shirt. Whoa. Here it is with good lighting. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, that looks better than the picture of the store. <laughs> yeah. Let me go there do that shot. There was a mix up on I'm on, I'm, on, I'm on you, Ian. Do it again. Oh, there was a Sorry. little mix up on the website. They they lightened it. And we're going to get some more easy photos. allies shill. Yeah. And the back has... The red easy allies on it. I don't know if you can see yeah, it. Yeah, you can't. It's, it's okay. But it's a dope ass shirt. Go buy it. Dope. Thank you for We're everyone who, who bought it, despite. Thank you uh, for everyone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shipping challenges in certain areas. Shipping uh, to Europe is expensive, apparently. Uh, it's a known issue, but. Sadly, right now, there's nothing we can do about it. it is not. That is why we're happy to announce we are moving to Europe. Oh! Yeah, shipping out. Oh, uh, one sec. That can't be expensive, um, can it? No! <laughs> Give we're me a second. Hand in the Europe? Studio. I have to go to the transition scene one more time because uh, I'm actually going to put a... I'm going to have Brad's camera up on this one. Uh, okay. Because Ooh. there's no, there's not supposed to be. Uh, this video doesn't need the audio. Um, Brad will be talking over this. Ah, so let me true. mute this Ooh. on here, ah. and then let me get Brad. So this will be a single cam shot for Brand, uh, for Brand, for well, Brad chat. Sorry, Brad, Brad doing Brand, 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 Brand. Uh, let me make sure I can add you correctly real quick. All right, cool. Uh, Brad non. Yeah. Brad non. <laughs> Sweet. Brand uh, is Josh Brolin's character in The Goonies. I know it. Mm. Cool. I know so, you know, Jones. All right. Uh, Brad, do you want you want me to start the video when you cue me, or do you want me to start it when we cut to you? Because chat's going to see the name just because it's paused. Even on Watch Together, they can see the title of the video. So let me, like, as soon as I go, as soon as we begin the timer and I cut to you. Actually, uh -huh. no, they won't. No, they won't. I'm sorry, Brad. I'm, oh, good. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fraud. Uh, here we go. Well, We're ready. You admit it. Uh, <laughs> just tell me when to play the video, Brad, and uh, we'll be okay. good. All right, Ian, you ready? Ready. Okay. Go ahead. 
When choosing a game to bring to Hall Greats, there are a lot of elements to consider. Not only do you want to win over your fellow allies Ooh. and have your pick enter the prestigious Hall of Greats, but you also want to bring a game you truly believe in. Something that left a, less, or a lasting impression on you. A game that stood out above the rest and excelled in its execution. Uh, the video is playing for me, so I'm going to mute it on my end. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you have audio control, sorry. Uh, the game I brought tonight, I firmly believe, is one of the best at what it does. A game that not only serves as the culmination of the franchise, but also an outstanding achievement in design. Now, I've brought this before, and much like its original, uh, original release, it was ignored and spat upon by the <laughs> ignorant because it was on a dead console. <laughs> However, much like how it rose from the ashes and found a new home, I too shall rise and bring it to the Hall of Greats once again. Now, I ask you, do you feel it? That cold breeze in the summer air? It is coming. Hit it, Damiani. It's motherfucking Donkey Kong Country <laughs> Tropical Freeze. It's back, baby. All right. So there are a ton of platformers out there. And we think of some of the best names like Mario, Crash Bandicoot, and Mega Man may come to mind. More of these are all undoubtedly great and beloved games. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is one of, if not the best platformers out there. Now, when you think about mix or what makes a great platformer, there are a few things that come to mind. For me, first, it's the controls. It's one of the most important elements of any game, especially in a game that requires precise movement. If the controls are bad, it doesn't matter how good or amazing other aspects like the level design may be, your entire experience will suffer. Luckily, Tropical Freeze nails its controls. Moving Donkey Kong around feels great. Whether you're rolling, leaping in the air, and swimming underwater, movement feels tight and precise. There are also additional Kongs to help, including Diddy, Dixie, and Cranky. Not only is it super jolly seeing them ride on DK's back, but they have special abilities like Diddy's jetpack or Dixie's helicopter hair. They're all super useful, but let's be real. Cranky's is the coolest since it's just Scrooge McDuck's cane jump. <sighs> However, with even their help, Tropical Freeze is a challenging game, so you better focus up. But if you get nervous about jumping in, you can always play in Funky Kong mode, who's pretty much the game's easy mode. No shame. All right, let's talk about the game's best element, I would say. It's biggest strength. It's level design. Each and every level feels like a meticulously crafted obstacle course, full of creative theming, concepts, and challenges for you to overcome. For example, Fruity Factory takes place in a giant factory with blades and drills that are shredding up giant fruit that you need a platform around to get through the stage. Windmill Hills, on the other hand, starts slowly with you riding on windmills and jumping on platforms that break over time. Then the difficulty ramps up when they combine the two elements, making you do a desperate sprint to the end. Even more traditional stages from past Donkey Kong games, like the Minecraft ones, are awesome. The Sawmill, or like Sawmill Thrill, which starts with you riding a Minecraft like always, but things ramp up as the saw starts chasing you, and you end up in a piece of wood that's like a raft, and you're going through water. It finally ends in another Minecraft section where you're being chased by a giant saw blade that's chopping up wood, making obstacles for you to dodge and platforms to ride on. It is insane. There are also some awesome unlocks, like extra stages and hard modes if you're looking to put your skills to the test. Just ask Kira about Bobopolis. I know he's a big fan. Oh yeah, did I mention the soundtrack? It's a 10 out of 10, by the way. It's insane. So, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. It's an insanely good game. It's one of the best platformers ever made. It's constantly presenting interesting and rewarding obstacles for you to overcome while remaining fair throughout. It's so good, in fact, when I booted up this week for a refresher, I ended up playing it for hours just because I was having such a good time. Tropical Freeze is a must and is more than worthy to enter the Hall of Greats. That's it. You got one minute left. You Don't sleep on it, time? man. Don't sleep on it. I know it started on Wii U, dead console. It's been brought back to the Switch better than ever, baby. If you love video games, this is a must play. I would recommend to anyone who loves video games if you want one of the best platformers out there. There you go. Okay. All right. Give me a sec. That was a good edit. Bought it twice. This is so good. <laughs> did you edit footage. that one? I did. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're back to the eight-person shot, so we can do cross-examination when you're ready. Uh, Bradley, I love co-op, but mm -hmm. I feel like this game thrives solo. Uh, yeah. Do you think that is that is that's okay, or what? Do you, what do you think about the co-op element? The co-op is. A nice little bonus to have. Obviously, I think it's the best by yourself or solo. 
but it's there if you want it. It can still be a lot of fun, and it presents a different experience. Like, playing co-op is very different than playing solo. So if you're looking for something a little different, yeah, man, pop it with a bud. Do you think the the overall difficulty spikes are sort of oddly paced in the game at all, Brad? Did any of it stand out to you where some of the seemed some bosses early on are rather hard, but then the like they, whole world after them is significantly easier just the, in terms of difficulty well, spikes? Well, I do you think, think the bosses it? are tougher than the levels and they should they should be that. I feel like they are the the boss of that world. They are the last thing you have to get through to clear that world. Uh, this game is not an easy game, but it's a fair game. I feel like every mistake you make is on you and the bosses are they're challenging but if you really take the time and just think about what's going on and what they're doing you'll be fine um brad so this is a nintendo platformer and that's right comparing it to let's say the most popular nintendo platformer mario i feel like mario really prides itself on every main entry being just wildly different mm -hmm. and really pushing new mechanics whereas tropical freeze is a great evolution of returns but that's that's what it is it's an iterative right sequel to returns do you think um that's disappointing at all or or like not a, not a point against it no for, for for example the mario games a lot of the mario games innovate because they're completely different types of games there's the new super mario brothers games that are all kind of the same mm -hmm. 2d side scrolling they all are very similar to each other donkey kong country returns obviously fits in the with the donkey kong country family but I think it ramps up the most and it has the most experimentation out of all of them. Uh -huh. Do you think uh, Dixie Kong is OP and devalues the other Kong? No, actually, I think Cranky Kong is the best. Nice. That's why you see all the speedrunners using that uh, Cranky Kong, Ooh. baby. Sick. Uh, you praise the controls, but uh, I feel like the controls is kind of one of the, the obstacles for me to adjusting to this game. Like, I get there, but I feel like there's somewhat of a, a heaviness and like a lack of uh the, the characters just don't feel as nimble to me as maybe well some other platformers donkey kong is a gorilla after all and he should feel not as nimble as mario let's say he's a big heavy gorilla man you could feel that weight when donkey kong slams the ground and i think he he feels how he should feel it doesn't feel like if you're used to playing like a mario game it may take you a second but when you actually wrap your head around it and start to get the feel of it. it's how a monkey should feel like him i, I feel like i run into this weird problem with donkey kong where i end up liking donkey kong the least as a character like i mm -hmm. enjoy playing diddy cranky and uh dixie way more and so whenever i'm just stuck with donkey kong i feel like it's it's kind of like a weird penalty in some way well you're and supposed to feel game. yeah you're supposed to feel like your buds are there. You want your friends there because they give you advantages. But Donkey Kong is more than capable on his own. Obviously, they're, these are like the game's version of power-ups, I would say. It's like your cape in Mario World or something like that. You could be totally fine, but when you get that, that cape, it's going to really help you out and you'll feel a little more secure. That's what the Kongs are like. But I think Donkey Kong, regardless if you use the other Kongs or not, has all the tools and is good enough to get through a level, just like in the hard mode levels where you can only use Donkey Kong. Um, the, the levels, as you said, are very memorable and, and very organic, uh, but what do you feel about the, the enemy designs, particularly, uh, in comparison to, say, the, the Kremlings of the original series? I mean, I like these, like, new, like, Viking-esque penguin people or whatever. I think they can't just ride the coattails of past games forever. They need to do something new and unique on their own, and I think their characters have just as much charm as the rare ones did. So, yeah, I think they're great. I don't see any problem with any of them. 30 seconds left. Anything? Anything? Want to got any on that one? Uh, I just didn't... I never finished this game, even though, like, I know it's an amazing game. I know it's one of the best platforms anybody's ever made. Like, I've accepted that in my heart. I've just never seen it as a game, like, I gotta finish. I think just because it's as bad as monkeys, gotta get some bananas. You know, it's mm -hmm. like there's just not a lot of weight. Not that there needs to be, like, an emotional weight to it, but, like, I don't know. Do you feel it's kind of trivial in a sense? Just I mean, like, like, what else would Donkey Kong of... really care about? The only thing he'd time, care about... Time! Time! <laughs> Nailed it, Brad. You, you did it. Okay. Yeah. You, <laughs> ban you bandied those questions aside expertly, Brad. Those, those are good cross-examination. Mm -hmm. 
Jones, you almost filibustered yourself out of the, <laughs> the whole question. Time. That was definitely a cross examination where I didn't even agree with myself. I was just like, somebody's gonna ask something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he's too furry. What do you have to say about that? Yeah. Not well, that's enough. the only question I would have asked, but that was good. Um, shall we see who's next? Oh, also, uh, no, we're done. you were no, saying we're Minecraft instead of Minecart. Oh, you know yeah. what? I always blood. do that. The I editor blood right there. I thought it was endearing. <laughs> but blood could have just let that one go. Could have just let it go, blood. We're go. all just not a big deal. Yeah, it's those blood. damn zoomers. It's those damn go. zoomers in their minds. I didn't waste his time. <laughs> no, just oh, ours. Okay. Just the rest of it. Yeah, that's good. That's why we have Jones Whoa. read the reviews. Right? Yes. <laughs> I'm the middleman. Yeah, it's not easy. The middleman. All right. Now, now shall we see who's next? Good. Yeah. <laughs> right. no, 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 no more blood burns? Stone right. cold reads. <laughs> wanna, I don't want to I don't want to know if I want to know blood, blood out brings of my Minecraft. read of my script. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he just keeps calling it Donkey Kong the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Donkey Kong. <laughs> All right, so our next presenter will be... It's either Blood or Huber. Huber! <laughs> Gotta get that, but we have a winner. All right, so give me a second, Huber. I like, I like it being uh, down between two people. That's fun. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Give me a sec, Huber, because I know you have... Yeah, I'll be doing uh, like a Brad thing, talking over a video. Got it. Oh, yeah, you didn't send me the link, so let me grab it real quick. Oh, shit. Sorry. No, 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 no. I can, I can grab it. <laughs> oh, You didn't shit. submit a link. Uh, uh -oh. I just have to log in and get it. One sec, one sec, one sec. My fault. Yeah, Huber, that, that's, that's going to affect my judgment. I got to be honest, man. You've already. <laughs> oh, Hubert. Yeah, well, presentation's card. been knocked down a couple notches. If you really cared about it, you would have. <laughs> You would have sent that link. Harsh. Right now, so. You would have sent that link. <laughs> I talked that's to him my, before. That's where my head's at right now. I'm just, you know. He never asked for it, so I was like, kind of, I didn't know if I needed to. That's why. He posted it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, minimize <laughs> your, busy uh, playing journey. Minimize your watch together uh, <laughs> now, so you don't see what it is. Yep. Minimize the Done. We are. Let me pause, make sure it's also because Huber wants no audio for this one. Yeah, no let's, audio. Mute that sucker. Pre presenters, let's use clear, clear, say, start the timer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and then start the video just so there's no mistakes. Got it. Give me one sec. If, if that applies to you, which it may not. All right, Huber. I am now on the scene with you in the corner. Um, yeah, just let me know when you want me to start the video, Huber, and I will start it for you. So say start video when you want video to start. Or just say Damiani, right. roll it, or whatever. Okay, alright. Roll it, Damiani. So, every game in this series is excellent, but this is the best one. Yakuza 0. It tells the most memorable story by far because it focuses on Majima and why he becomes the person that we have spent so much time with prior to the release of this game, and Kazuma at one of the most pivotal, pivotal moments in his life and his bond with Mishiki and uh, what it means to be part of the Yakuza. Also, this is the game that made this series a household name, which truly matters. This franchise now is a massive success and a lot of people after playing this entry have gone on to play six more games in this series because this this story resonated so hard with everyone and before we dive into everything else i want to give a shout out to the villains of this game because i think they're the strongest villains in this series uh because we have multiple villains we have Kuze, who is a classic Yakuza gangster and loves it. This guy loves the Yakuza. He is honor bound and a physical threat to Kazuma. And he goes full on Akira with a motorcycle and pipe. So shout out to that. Uh, then you have Awano, who just uses the Yakuza as a means to an end. Uh, and, and we're seeing all these different sides of the Yakuza. This guy's just in it to live a comfortable life, flamboyant and uh, more of a thinker than Kuze. Uh, then you have Shibus Shibusawa, who will do anything to rise to the top. Uh, just a mastermind working behind the scenes, calculated, 
And then of course, we see a villain who looms large over this series, but we rarely get a chance to interact with him. And that's Dojima. Uh, that, you know, one of the main founders, uh, the founder, the patriarch of the Dojima clan. And you really see how much of a slimy piece of trash this guy is. Uh, and then of course, on the other side with Majima, you have this uh, Chinese John Wick assassin, Lao Guai, who's super epic and just has a big impact. And then a ton of other villains that I will not spoil uh, because I don't want to get into too many spoilers. Uh, then of course you have Majima and we, you know, before he becomes the mad dog, his bond with Makoto and what he goes through and what shapes him in the future, why he is who he is, what he, what he strives to do later on in the series. Uh, and then, of course, Kazuma, again, coming in at a time when he's younger. This is one of the, the most realized characters in video game history. We spent seven video games with this character, but this is his origin, uh, which has such an impact. Uh, his bond with Nishiki, his bond with Tachibana, and how that parallels Majima's bond with Makoto uh, is just really powerful storytelling. Uh, and the entire story, all that intimacy being wrapped around this big narrative arc of a power grab. This is a power grab for real estate, for property, and what these people will go through to, for, to, to ultimately seize power. Uh, and, and it's just, just an incredible story. Uh, then, of course, exploration. This is not just a game of story. This is a game of gameplay. Kamaracho and Sotenbori are phenomenal locations to explore. There's mini, ga mini games like the arcade where you can play full on Dawn. You can just play Outrun, Super Hang On, Space Harrier, and Fantasy Zone in their entirety. There's karaoke, pocket circuit racing, batting cages. You can go to restaurants and just One RP minute. and eat in these places. The economy matters the most in this because you can use it for the real estate and the cabaret and to buy your skills. Mr. Shakedown is a legend. He will hunt you down and steal your cash. Combat is impactful and forceful. It reminds me of classic beat-em-ups. And the heat actions are one of the coolest things in video games. There are so many. Every single time you do this one, even if it's a repeat, it's phenomenal. And of course, the sub-stories, the side quests are so, so good in this game. Akuri Quest, here, a couple spoilers for these if you're, if you're sensitive. This kid just wants to buy a video game, but a thug steals it. It, and you chase this guy down. It turns out it was just the guy's dad who couldn't afford the game, trying to give this kid a game as a father. Uh, just the story will surprise you. They're so endearing for how uh, they're... That, then, of course, heir to the family. You spend time with a young Daigo Dojima, and uh, Daigo's, just, Daigo's just being a spoiled brat. Time. <laughs> <laughs> that was great, Hoover. Oh. <laughs> This is the one we played at Easy Living, right? Yes. Oh, so good. Yep. And the one where Tom Manny was like, you just watch the ball. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> home run after home run yep. after home run. Yep. Oh, God. Yep. All right. Sorry, I didn't are, count that in the cross-exam. <laughs> we're ready for uh, cross-exam. Yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, whoever wrote this script did a bang-up job. <laughs> bang it was. Yeah, yeah, that cut, too. Uh <laughs> Second of all, phenomenal pick, by the way. Uh, <laughs> however, something with this game that I that I always kind of wrestle with emotionally is Majima's story is incredible, as you touched on. It's so good, and I think Kiryu's story is also good. But in comparison, I think I think Majima's story is the better story, um, and so much so that like there. Do, do you think this game suffers at all from having that split? Because I think just where Majima's story goes emotionally is like a pinnacle. For sure. Majima, he, he like, obviously Kazuma has like so many games to work with. Goro always isn't around. Uh, you know, he always isn't always in the forefront, but I think Kazuma's story serves Majima's and bolsters it up because you really dive into the Yakuza and the families and that, and, and I love that also, uh, because uh, Majima is working with Makoto and trying to, you know, protect her on the parallel serving that story is Kazuma working with Tachibana, who, of course, 
have big revelations about that. And I think that bolsters Majima's story. Bolsters. Uh, bolsters. It's been a long time since I've played this Huber, but the one thing I remember from Yakuza games is sometimes the boss fights drag the hell on. <laughs> and I definitely remember that from this game. What do you think about that? Yeah, uh, combat has never in the Yakuza games been like deep, but I still think it has impact and force and it's always fun all the way up until the credits, uh, even if it is on the, on the simpler side. And I love boss fights dragging out in this series because it gives it this reverence. You know, when these people are clashing, it's like anime style Dragon Ball villains, <laughs> just <laughs> ultimate power going toe to toe. And, and it, it serves that for the story. Okay. Uh... Uh, let's talk about the style system. Yes. Uh, really cool addition. Super fun. I think it adds a lot to combat. Um, however, I think with both Majima and Kiryu, some styles are just simply more effective than others. Um, particularly during boss fights. You know, Brad kind of touched on how the boss fights go out. I think there are just certain styles that obliterate bosses. And I found myself kind of relying on the same strategies a little bit more than I wanted to. I think there were moments that I wanted to be pushed out of my comfort zone a little bit more. Uh, do you think that is something the game could have done better? Totally, and it evolved later on in the series, but I will say to that point, the side stories, if you finish these side stories, the cabaret and the real estate, you unlock additional fighting styles, like the dragon of Tojima's fighting style, uh, which is just an awesome reward, so it kind of alleviates that uh, because you are rewarded later on down the line for doing additional stuff. How much time we got, Ian? No further questions. Oh, um, you can stop if you want. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no further questions. Huber, you talked about the heat actions, and yeah. um, you know those those are those are fun to see, fun to watch. But with such a game where you get into so many fights and stuff, does it feel like there are enough uh, in there? Does it feel like it gets to become too repetitive over time, or do you do you think that it it, it works? You would think it would be repetitive, but I could slam someone's face into a wall forever. I could slam a bike on top of someone forever. I could watch that animation 1,000 times and still have a smile on my face. <laughs> I believe it. Have you seen it 1,000 times, yes or no? At this point, bro. Yes or no. Yeah. Seven, yes or no. Seven yeah. Answer the question. Yeah. Yes yeah, like, or no. Okay. Uh, hey, hey, Hubert, does the arcade ever close? <laughs> no, close. but there are side stories that take you to the arcade. You you hang out at the arcade with Daigo, who is a, who is a recurring character and a big character later on in the series. So you have really awesome moments in that arcade. Don, you can go on on dates in the arcade. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how about twenty seconds? Like the when you get in a combat scenario, it like loads into combat or something, right? Doesn't it do that in that one? Kind of, kind of like. <laughs> ruins like the tension of approaching a thug on a street i guess yeah i mean it, that took to like seven six or seven games to to finally get the tech right it is a last gen game so i will Time. oh it is had a last gen had game. to like nitpick uh, the shit else out was of said. that <laughs> God, dude, that felt wrong Love questioning it. It. <laughs> i know i know <laughs> i hear you man <laughs> somebody's gotta say something yeah <laughs> Let's see uh, who's going next. Yeah. Get more with be... the assist on that uh, footage there. <laughs> I was going to, you, but you pulled through in the end. I was like, I can't believe you didn't mention Mr. Shakedown, and then you pulled through. <laughs> I was very happy about that. Okay, Mr. Shakedown, dude. Hey, so uh, next up will be Don Casanova. Ooh. Oh, shit. Uh, Don did get me a... Ooh. Their just presentation. In the, just mm -hmm. in the nick of time. So yeah, uh, close. This is the, you will not be talking over this. That's the only thing I have to clarify. I don't okay, know. this is an audio up. No, I'm, I'm asking Don. Is is this like narrated or do, are you talking over this? Like I'm not talking. It's narrated. It's okay. Just okay. the just the video. So, so go ahead and turn your volume back up. Yeah. Uh, All right. Turn your volume back up and then minimize your watch together. I'll give you ten seconds. 
Right. Or click um, on over to store.roosterteeth.com. Yeah, so, you know. <laughs> Dude, nice. Or <laughs> patreon.com slash yeah, Patreon.com slash All, right. All right. Minimize your watch togethers. I'll unplug it in and now. Give me a sec. You uh, can just uh, click on the merch link on easyallies.com. <laughs> Whoa, rather than remembering easy. all that whoa we can hear it we can yeah, hear it we can Pause hear it, it. I, I can definitely hear yeah. it pause no, it, it's a, it's even better Damiani. no it's pause <laughs> it wouldn't it wouldn't load it wouldn't load for no, me but it, the first actually. frame is loaded for me so uh give me a sec i will get this ready for you don um enjoy the show i I'm heard so unmistakable sounds in there that yeah. so that that sound you heard was a red herring i'll just tell you that much okay oh uh, uh. Don't ruin Spoilers. red herrings. Oh, red herrings from what? Like Chevron one, station or something? One second. What happened? Yes. <laughs> He's playing <laughs> it's Shenmue All this 3, footage what? I used in here, I really threw it together fast. So it may not be obviously a perfect representation of what you're hearing me say, but some of it is, you know, just uh, gives you an idea. Also, I didn't want to spoil much of this game. So I, it's, this is just the first couple worlds. So. Uh, yeah, give me one sec. Something uh, is the video here. five minutes, so so I don't shouldn't time it. It's under five minutes. You don't need yeah. to time it. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm doing screen capture. Oh, Don, this is not sixteen nine. Well, yeah, yeah, should be. Controversy. Whoa, dude. Whoa. Uh, it going? looks good on my end, but maybe something happened in the upload. Hang on one second. If we Let's have to, I'll just, I'll just, just give me a second. Uh, I'll play it on my background and read the script live. I'm, I'm gonna, re I'm gonna refresh on <laughs> my end. These Sorry. hollow grades just never goes right for Dawn. I feel like this is actually perfect. You have no idea how happy I am. About this. Okay, I think it will work now. I'll give me a sec. Do you have Kool Aid again? I hope. <laughs> Kool Aid's gonna jump through your computer. <laughs> yeah, you the Kool Aid, the Kool -Aid oh jug's gosh. gonna, the Kool Aid jug is gonna tear through your computer screen. Oh, okay. Amazing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sorry. For some reason, watch together just sized it wrong, so I just refreshed it. Nice. Got it. Sorry for getting to that in so late, Tommyani. No worries. Uh, all right. Uh, exciting, I will. Though. I will start the video once uh, you Man. give me the oh. uh, the cue. Let's do it. Sonic Mania, an epic AAA joyride which deserves accolades. Sonic Mania could be described as a world-famous rock band who hit the skids, OD'd, changed <laughs> musical genres several times, burnt out, then somehow reassembled to put together an expanded double-volume greatest hits album so good that it justified all the years of past debauchery. While the game I chose this week <laughs> is compared to that of a small indie band who shredded their hearts out with pure love and no room for error and turned out one of the most rock solid debuts of the year. The band is Easy Trigger Games and the game is Hunt Down. Hunt Down. <laughs> Hunt Down is a 2D co-op shooter created by a small team out of Sweden called Easy Trigger Games. What you have here is extremely fine-tuned action and platforming with a plethora of weapons where every single one of them is adjusted to perfection and an absolute blast to use. You play as three bounty hunters following a series of jobs targeting several highly theatrical street gangs. This is a retro style game which doesn't rely on nostalgic memories of gameplay from the past. It invigorates and elevates the old school arcade shooter. The elaborately animated warscape is reminiscent of the purely perfected fun of Metal Slug, yet often requiring far more thoughtful strategy in blowing the enemy legions to kingdom come. The first and immediate thing that caught my eye on this magnificent jewel is the art style and world of story. At every single moment of play, every single inch of screen space is filled with rich detail, creating an atmosphere so thick and intoxicating to behold that I found myself taking a knee time after time to simply gaze upon its dark beauty. This game had me waking up all hours of the night and day with visions of its landscape calling to me. This world is given life through hand-painted 16-bit pixel art graphics, hand-drawn animations, all running at 60 frames per second. This is a year when we have been indulged with visual feasts, the likes of Ori and the Will of the Wisps, 
yet I can say with certainty that the art and world of story in Hunt Down stands head and shoulders with its big budget peers. Next, I'd like to highlight the exceptional level design in Hunt Down. 20 beautifully detailed stages and 20 maniacal bosses. This apocalyptic cityscape is clever, challenging, and fun to traverse. The platforming blends thoughtfully with its setting to the point of turning it into an art form. Traveling through cross sections of urban infrastructure, you duck in, out, and behind from cover, often having to backtrack, searching for resources and weapons before moving forward again with your strategy and armaments renewed. You explore neon back alleys and blown apart cinema and shopping centers, clearing out a wide assortment of enemies, hunting down hidden stashes and secret areas. Quite often, mini boss battles will ambush you, and at times, the fight is expanded from the constraints of the 2D plane of battle in surprising ways. And with this, there is constant progression, a satisfying progression in the difficulty, and a progression in the setting from steaming underground tunnels to epic cityscapes and beyond. It's a world worth exploring and re-exploring every last nook and cranny. Also important is the balance of the weapons. This is a game where you can choose to skillfully and stealthily slice your way through using only a katana blade or go guns blazing with explosive rocket launchers. At a time when we are treated to masterpiece after masterpiece on a sometimes monthly basis in this new golden age of gaming, this is a small underdog game that over time may easily be swallowed up in the abyss of the media deluge we find ourselves in. It executes so perfectly, it is so fun to play and replay, one can only dream what this team could do with a blockbuster budget. Tonight we can recognize Easy Trigger Games and their creation, Hunt Down, as one of the all-time greats. It's everything I ever prayed for. Nice. Nice job, Don. Sick. I'm yeah. sorry. That, that footage really didn't match with anything that I was saying. And even a couple of clicks. I was just... Oh, I trying. love how raw it was, though, man. I was trying yeah, to just, toss that together at the last second. It was I all think you up. really sold the pace of that game. Well, the pace, that's some of the first of that game I've ever seen. I've all seen that game, Blake Jones, but... I was going so super slow into. You, you sell it, though. <laughs> because you were deliberate. You were deliberate. Yeah, I was wanting you to see the background, but it would have been nice if I get some faster shots in there with more weapons and stuff. But you got the oh, idea. Oh, man, I got, I got questions. Hit. I'll start it when you start it. Everybody ready? Cool. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you switch characters? You only switch to the other character once. You mentioned both, but I wasn't sure how that works. And why are they, yeah, are they so, different? Like what? So it's just set up where basically uh, you can't switch with them mid-level, but you can at any time like in your progress basically restart that particular level with them. And then they just have slight differences, like basically uh, uh, the robot is like a quick single shot and, and, the, and the girl has like a little machine gun multi-shot. They have a little different speed and basically the power of their guns and the speed with which they move, uh, the three different characters. It's just the secondary weapon too. Yeah, and all the secondary, the grenade or the boomerang, depending what your uh, primary secondary weapon is. Don, dude, I'm so fucking glad you brought this game. Uh, 10 out of 10. Um, what do you say, though, to... Because there's 20 levels, and over time, you kind of see how small they are. Uh, you're really able, able to burn through each stage really quickly, so that kind of hinders the exploration. I know there's, like, the three briefcases you can get in every level, but the levels are pretty small, so exploration wasn't that meaningful. What do you say about that? I definitely agree where I got the feeling that, well, I mean, exploration for me was really meaningful because even though the areas were small, it was an interesting way they balanced the game because it was like 20 levels that were like sort of medium length side scrolling. Some of them were a little shorter, but definitely none of them were as long as you'd expect them to be. But then each one had basically a boss. And, you know, a lot of the first bosses are pretty easy, but they progress pretty good. But it's a true boss. And then many, many, many of the stages have a mini boss too. So it's sort of interesting the way they split up their resources. But um, yeah, for me, it just left me wanting a lot more. I mean, I had fun looking for the secrets and even just the detail of the world, the story was so fine and beautiful and like fun to be in. And even just the small branching, I mean, overall it's one linear stage, but they have small little branching paths you can go in and little nooks and crannies you can explore and like, 
and it's just I don't know and also the speed of which you go through the game right here I was obviously going through like very plodding and slow but um it can be like really fun to explore it at a different speed too because you can basically get into like a speed running type of play with this game where it's very aggressive and fast or you can go super slow and stealthy through the whole thing and uh just the like way of strategizing your weapons too in terms of like trying to care because you can only carry one extra sidearm like trying to like advance a weapon drop it get another one bring it forward and like do all a lot of that kind of stuff so you can like keep certain resources with you and if you do well it's just incredible how you can like keep certain resources with you through the whole game really if you don't die uh, yeah the, are, are you given cool guns and cool parts like that like so do you do you really have to like uh, did you did you find a lot like oh cool flamethrower and then like a couple minutes later you're like oh here's the part where the game or shotgun or grenade launcher or whatever somewhat for sure yeah there's like certain enemies or bosses or areas that are like certain weapons are a lot more effective but the way it's designed and the ai and everything is so good because you can approach it though with anything if you choose to and also just the balance uh, of all the different weapons is like really incredible. I mean, it's like more often than not, the biggest problem I had is I would have like three different guns and I wanted them all <laughs> because they're all like super fun just to go through the next sequence with. And, um, and so, yeah, it was just. Uh... Um, Don, so at the end, there was a, a character kind of saying a little cheesy quip, and I think yeah. that can be really fun and awesome. But there are also games where those kinds of quips are overdone and become super repetitive. Yeah. Is that, is that an issue here? So that's the thing that was incredible about this game, actually, Ben, is because, yeah, exactly. Especially what they're taking from the game was inspired. They said, you know, by all the 80s popcorn action movies, you know, the old Death Race 2000, like mm -hmm. Stallone's Cobra, the Warriors, obviously, and things like that. But, um, uh, it came across nice in this one. It was just funny and it was like kind of mostly like, harmless good stuff it wasn't like other games and certain like you know even a game like uh, an old like beat cop or something like that had certain uh uh you know where it just didn't land right the humor was like kind of off in a lot of areas but this one to me it was just like it was just nice like everything was funny and nothing made you like laugh out loud like crazy or something but it was just like fun cheese i mean it was like watching one of those popcorn you know 80s action movies is now it's just kind of like joyous fun goofy you know what I'm saying? But it was nothing irritating. It was not like you're hearing these same sound bites go off all the time, or it wasn't like you're hearing things that were just kind of like off in terms of how the humor landed and stuff like that. It was like nothing stood out and irritated me in that time. Mm. Good job, Don. Nice. Good right. job, Dan. Yay. Clean. Sick. Clean. Made it under time. Yeah. First time? Yeah. Maybe. Well, uh, the rebuttal, what do you mean? Oh, but everything. He, normally, he he bleeds over in the presentation phase. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. I think no, I think there's been times before you've been fine, Don. Nice. All right, we're down to our last three. Let's find out who will be going next. So I spin the wheel of names, and our next presenter is going to be. Blood word. Yeah. Nice. Um, right. Give me one sec. Yeah, I'm gonna adjust my camera here. Ooh. Oh. Whoa, whoa. Visual aids. <laughs> uh, is it okay to go to the shot with you in it, Blood? Or do you want me to wait? Sure. What do you mean with, with me in it? Chat hasn't seen what your background is, so I don't know if that gives it away or. Oh, um, yeah, but I'll, I'll, I'll cue my background when I get to a certain point. Okay, he's so doing cool. it on his end. Yeah, okay, I'm doing the, cool. I'm doing the okay. virtual background. To, gotcha. Yeah. So uh, it's safe to come to your shot right now, then. Yeah. Okay. All right. We are wow. in the the group shot. So whenever you are ready, blood. All right. Here we go. Uh, so today I'm bringing a game that is completely timeless, entirely unrestrained by technology. A uh, game that I believe is as good as uh, as good today as it was the day it came out, uh, and a game that I think will bring wonder to anyone who plays it, uh, and will continue to do so for infinity. And that game, of course, is Katamari Damacy. Oh. 
Um, I want to talk about when I first uh, heard of this game uh, because it was one of my first E3s, actually. And, you know, we were, you know, a Nintendo team. We were just covering Nintendo games. And so, like, we didn't even have to go to, like, South Hall, right? Like, there was no reason to, to, to go over there except for, you know, maybe a third-party thing here or there. Most, But most of that stuff was in Nintendo's booth. But then one of my 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 coworkers was like, You've gotta, you've gotta go to Namco's booth. You gotta go see this game. You gotta go see Katamari. You know, and so from like it was that kind of thing, that little like like definition of a hidden gem uh, that just kind of blew up and blew up and blew up from there and just kind of become this this cult hit. Uh, and you know, if somehow you're you're not too familiar with the setup, you play as the meek prince who has to make up for the dishonorable mistakes of your father. Uh, the king of all cosmos, who has stricken the stars from the sky. Um, and the way that you do this is by rolling your Katamari around. And uh, you, <laughs> you, you, you get the objects, the smaller objects, and, and everything just gets stickier and stickier and, and, and gloms on and becomes this huge mass. And you're essentially a, a proverbial dung beetle of the universe, uh, <laughs> rolling things larger and larger until the king is satisfied or your timer uh, runs out. Uh, what's interesting, uh, one of the things that you can't necessarily get, you, you sort of get a sense of it from, from looking at video, uh, but the control is uh, kind of intentionally disorienting. You have to use both analog sticks uh, in a way that you, you hadn't really, and there's not really any other game that kind of like does the same sort of thing where you, you like, one up and one down and, and and side to side and all this stuff to, to kind of move around. Uh, but it, it, it speaks to the, the difficulty of your task and the overbearingness uh, of your father. <laughs> uh, but what's, what's also cool about the control though is that the physics of all these objects that you pick up directly influence uh, the, the physics of, of the ball. And so how things stack onto each other makes it lopsided uh, or, or shift to the right or left or whatever. Uh, so trying to even that out and correct for it is, is pretty fun and crazy. Um, it's also uh, very much like an RPG and just there's just that, that satisfying hit of getting larger and larger and having that, um, that, that moment of kind of leveling up so that you you see something that you think you can pick up or you see something that's blocking your path or you get hit by a cat or something uh but then as you roll over like larger and larger things and you like you discover it's like okay now i can get that thing and like now i can get this thing like and now like i'm just gonna steamroll those cats just get them all you know it's uh, it's very satisfying and in, in that sense of growth uh and especially you know when that that cat meows in protest uh, and that's another like really fun thing about this game is is the audio design. Uh, there are a lot of uh, sounds that One emerge minute. as you pick up different objects. The soundtrack flies into that. Uh, there's the visuals of the creatures wiggling and vibrating, trying to escape. And, and if uh, if it wasn't so hilarious, you could pitch this as a horror game, as you just menace the town, crush and stifle its citizens into a death trap. Uh, but the pastel landscapes and sugary music just pull it off and let, let you know it's all fun and games. It thrives on a simple concept full of underlying complexity as the world just kind of seamlessly like adapts to you getting bigger and the scale changes. What's even more impressive are the number of everyday objects you can snag along the way, including thumbtacks, crabs, cats, dogs, hands, graffiti, tomatoes, persimmons, chopsticks, teddy bears, screws, letters, Parsley, eye drops, dandelions, birds, flowers, little girls, bananas, egg cartons, piggy banks, fire extinguishers, RC cars, briefcases, buckets, bikes, fishermen, swans, cake, giraffes, ramen bowls, arrows, Time. pie pans. There you go. <laughs> I respect just having a giant list to fill out your time. <laughs> Running out the clock. Love it, love it. Hold on, hold on. I'll begin the uh, time when someone right. talks. Had to ask. Uh, clarify this for me, Bloodworth. You said you could pick up dogs and cats. Uh, yeah. Do they look like they're in distress at any point when you pick them up? No, oh, jeez. <laughs> everything, <laughs> yeah. everything wiggles a bit for sure. Yeah, it, 
you know, whether you consider that wiggling in protest or, or wiggling uh, as you're enjoying uh, your experience, uh, it's that's up to your interpretation. If you were to interpret it as the cat was in distress, would you? Uh, do you, do you does the game does their game provide you alternative to not having to pick up cats? <laughs> Most of the time, yeah, you, okay. you can avoid. Okay. You can try okay. to avoid, I can as avoid much cats. as you want. All right. all right, that's all I needed to know. Blood, I've been playing this franchise for a long time. I love this franchise to death so much. I, I, I always just at the end of the day, when I step away from each game in the in the series, just kind of pull my hair out a little bit about the controls. I'm like, okay, this has been a fun experience, but I wish there was just a mode where they just turn off these damn controls. I've just never They're actually the, I've the just never been ones happy do. with them. Oh, really? Everyone's do have like an easier control mode. I've yeah. just never been happy with them. And it it's this thing where it's like, I, I know why they're there. I understand. And it's, I definitely do get better at them. And, and certainly when you get a lot of speed going, it's very gratifying because you finally do pull it off. But man, it's just frustrating. It's just always made me a little angry. Uh, am I playing it wrong? Do you do you agree, disagree? Uh, no, I, I, I don't agree or I, I don't disagree that you're playing it wrong or I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> but I do think that it's, yeah, that's definitely, you know, like an Octodad or I Am Bread or whatever. Like it's very much, it's, that's an intentional part of the gameplay is that, mm. you know, you can't be as good as you think you are. Uh, blood. Phenomenal pick. Uh, I guess really reaching here the only thing that i can think of that i don't like about katamari one specifically is you are under a time limit um which adds kind of pressure and franticness but i think especially as you go on and the levels get more and more and more expansive it kind of feels like trial and error where like you're not really sure sometimes in the later levels especially when you have to pick up so much like where your ball is at and what you can pick up and so it feels like you're kind of forced to do the levels a couple of times just to figure out like okay, this is where I need to go, or this is what I need to pick up. Do you think there's some way that that could have been improved? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, and just even like the clip that I just showed, you know, like there's a certain, sometimes there's certain points where like you do get blocked off from areas because your size is increased or because you've, you know, gone downhill so far that it's not worth going back. So there's, yeah, I think there's definitely some trial and error, but I actually think that in some ways that works to the game's, replayability uh and and that you know it is it is fun to discover a new area that you didn't see the first time around uh, it is fun to to find those hidden little easter eggs or find one of the gifts um and so yeah i actually um yeah i i think that your point's definitely valid but i think it it works to some point as well is there a gameplay reason for the little version of yourself in the bottom corner? I always wondered that. Is it just showing like which way you're moving? <laughs> or is it's it just, just cute? It's just, it just like fun? a cute picture of what the prince is doing, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It, it's funny because it's one of those things like, you know, with any HUD to where like my brain doesn't even notice it until like, oh yeah, that's over there, isn't it? It's, it's like, like shooting he's a, birds out. It's like he's a streamer on Twitch, you know, and he's got the green screen oh, behind him. Yeah. yeah. You can also they pick different characters Twitch. in this one, right? Or is that in later games? Isn't that multiplayer? Um, I think the multiplayer you can get another. And so because because you can't see you in the game, I think uh, that's maybe why that's there. So you can just see your character rolling around. You, I'm pretty sure you have different characters that you can select in one. One minute. Yeah, maybe but... you just can't select them right away. Yeah, you have to unlock them, but I'm pretty sure there's different characters. Hmm. Hmm. Tell me more about the music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the theme song is is pretty outstanding. You know, like that's one of those things. Like when you get somebody like just belting out the the title of your game, like you you're ready for this mood. <laughs> Oh, excuse you ever, me. Bless you. Do you ever feel like anything comes too repetitive in this game? In terms of like the kind of doing the same thing over and over again? Or do you like the levels you said they get bigger? Do you think they evolve enough to They do have different push? goals at times? Yeah. You know, where you have to collect a specific game, type of yeah. object or like sometimes um you know, there's one that had like early on that has crowns where some of the crowns can be stuck in out of reach places. So you're like Question like, is there a trick to get time? This? Smooth, smooth. We yeah. did it. Yeah. Good job, Bloodworth. 
We are down to our last two presenters. So it is down to you, and it is down it's to It's either Ben or Ian, and it shall be... Ben Moore. Oh, oh shit. I'm lying. Which means you or Ian will be after. So I don't even need... What does it do? When I... I want to see what... Can I just I indulge myself? You... No, wait. Thanks. Spin it oh, later. Bye. Okay, wait. I'll spin it later. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. That you actually give me the spin. I, I was like, I want to see what happens with the spin as well. So, uh, yes, uh, I'm with you. I'm on the same page here. Uh, so everyone go ahead and uh, minimize their watch together. There's also, I would say, uh, mute, mute it on your end if you can oh, sure. as well <laughs> before we do does this it, again. Does it like show the thumbnail or something? Or Yeah, because yeah. when I plug it in, it shows. The... I've already accounted for that. Yeah, I think because like the dawn started nine seconds in, so like it might that be that was. I think someone, just... yeah, like I tried to uh restart it, but it kept jumping to that. So I wonder if because someone else was like, if someone else hits play, like right. they also control it. So uh, it was a little okay. weird. Um, so give me one sec here. This is going to be a, as if I'm correct, Ben, this is a video which is already VO'd, right? You're not narrating it. Yeah, I wrote and edited it, and it's exactly five minutes. Nice. So <laughs> cool. uh, go ahead and minimize your watch togethers. Uh, I'm going to mute something on my end so we won't hear the allies for just a sec chat. So hang on. That way you don't hear any sound effects. It will be. I'm just getting it set up right now. Uh, because I also want them to, like, you know, this, have the surprise as well. Okay, so you're back unmuted. So uh, give me one sec. Let me get the shot set up. I think I have All a right. Paper Mario song stuck in my head. It's just like four seconds of music, just like aggressively looping. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dude, I just got Katamari music in my head now. Ben, dun, dun, I'm dun, ready dun, to dun, begin dun, dun, whenever dun, you dun, give dun, me the cue. Dun, 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 dun. Whatever. It's good. There are few games imbued with as much passion and energy as Bayonetta. It is undeniable and made clear within seconds of starting that this is a game that refuses to be anything less than an absolute riot of creativity. While Bayonetta is no doubt a high point of the action genre, its qualities are great when measured by any metric. The mechanics naturally teach the player, and there is a rating system that pushes you toward mastery while also having enough crutches to aid the learning process. Bayonetta herself is an absolutely magnetic lead, and it's really a shame that there are so few within gaming that can be compared to her. She's not just a strong female protagonist, but a character who is allowed to be unabashedly confident, deferring or apologizing to no one. Bayonetta is in complete control, using style, wit, humor, and sexuality not as a form of justification, but of expression. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention one of the reasons I hunt your kind. You're much too ugly not to put out of your misery. <laughs> <laughs> Every bit of Hideki Kamiya's authorial voice comes through. Rarely do projects feel so focused and sure of themselves. The game is insane, and that insanity is channeled into a great time. No one is more aware of this than Kamiya himself. While it's true that Bayonetta builds off the hugely important and influential Devil May Cry, it's not at all content with just repeating the same tricks. If Devil May Cry emphasizes having a flawless offense for the sake of building up the style gauge, Bayonetta is centered around defense. By dodging at the perfect moment, you activate Witch Time, triggering slow motion for everything except you, allowing you to pummel away and deal massive damage. It's a genius mechanic that is deceptively simple. While many players may feel the urge to mash away or copy and paste one successful strategy, which time naturally prevents that from being very effective. There is a way the game wants you to play, and rather than over-tutorialize, the game naturally adapts you to that flow. Within a few levels, you become an expert at reading attacks, reacting on the fly, and then capitalizing on an opening. Yet Bayonetta isn't so rigid that it eliminates player freedom. Just because mastery of witch time is needed for any real success, there's still plenty of room to grow once you've learned the basic mechanics. There are so many different combos and techniques to figure out. 
Slowly increasing maximum damage takes plenty of effort and not something the game spells out for you at all. But there's still a ton of reward for nailing one witch time dodge, even if you just follow up with the most basic string of attacks. As a result, wherever you're at in the learning process, whether it's just getting the hang of witch time or trying to get through a level without taking any damage at all, Bayonetta gives you meaningful feedback for your efforts, constantly pushing you to be a better player. You know, you're not nearly so ugly when you're screaming. Even the best design can sink under a bland aesthetic or an overly repetitive structure. Fortunately, Bayonetta is astoundingly exciting, taking pride in its own relentless extremity. The game begins with you hurtling through the sky on top of a clock tower, fighting angels with your friend as a narrator sets the scene. This is all playable, by the way. In the very next segment, someone constantly throws Bayonetta pistols that she uses to blast away angels, and he throws them from the casket that he just violently bursts forth from. Bayonetta doesn't just have special attacks, she dramatically humiliates and tortures enemies, whether that's kicking an enemy into an Iron Maiden as it screams in pain, or summoning a giant monster made of hair that chomps on bosses, nothing is too ridiculous and the game is all the more fun for it. Bayonetta doesn't shy away from its own goofiness, but rather embraces it. And really, at the end of the day, that's all that needs to be said about Bayonetta. It is one of a kind. The game has not and never will receive widespread mainstream appreciation. Few things that are so aggressively audacious do. Bayonetta is not an easily digestible game, but rather one that loudly and proudly marches to the beat of its own drum. It's the kind of individuality we should cherish, and something that unquestionably belongs in the Hall of Greats. Yeah. Good at it. That was great. That was a great video, man. I, I can see the rest of my time. <laughs> <laughs> one second. All right. Uh, then more. Freaking Bayonetta. So sick. Uh, why should why the first game over mm. Bayonetta mm. 2? Because mm. I feel like Bayonetta 2 just improves in every area. So why, why Bayonetta 1? Um, I don't think it's every area. I, I think, uh, specifically when it comes to the story, I, I there are some elements of Bayonetta 2's story that I don't think work quite as well um, as Bayonetta 1. Uh, I think definitely there are some iterative improvements for sure, but uh, Bayonetta 2, while a phenomenal game, I think there there's something about the tone of 1 that, is hard to perfectly replicate. Like, I think Bayonetta 2 is a great, great, great sequel. Phenomenal game. And Bayonetta 2 probably deserves to be in this as well. But there, <laughs> there are certain things about that original that I, I don't think you can beat for me. Sick. You mentioned how crazy it is, Ben. And to mm -hmm. me, as somebody who doesn't know a lot about the lore of the game, hasn't played through either of these games, yeah. it just seems crazy. It's just like the, when I see a crazy enemy, it's like, whoa, how did they think of that? Obviously, I have no context because I haven't played the game. Is there context for the specific type of crazy this is? Like when you see enemies, are you always like, sure, you know, you know, coming, I don't know how you thought of that. Or is it like, oh, all of this does kind of make sense given what I know about the world, what I know about the bad guys and their yeah. army and so on and so forth? Yeah, um, that's actually a really good question, and it's something that I that I like about it is, you know, I mentioned the craziness, but it's not craziness just for craziness sake. There is a consistency to it, and um, if you look at, like, the Umber of Witches, right, they have a very consistent style that whenever you're encountering one of these characters, there is a through line there, and that's true of the enemies as well, and that's really important um, because no matter how ridiculous the angelic enemies get, there is a pattern in their design that gives them consistency. And not only are they justified within the context of the story itself, there are optional texts that you can pick up that further contextualize them if that's something you're looking for. 
Um, do you feel that, yeah, that whole uh, battle of like angels versus demons and, and all of that that's kind of presented there, and particularly some of the character designs, do you feel that sometimes skews a little too close to the Devil May Cry roots? It, sometimes it feels like things can look a little familiar here and there. Um, it's, it's hard because I think comparing these games, uh, in, in a way you kind of really have to compare it to Devil May Cry 1, um, because that was the only one that can be directed. Um, and there are definitely similarities. I, Bayonetta, I mean, Camille has said as much, Bayonetta wouldn't have happened without Devil May Cry, that's true. But I think if you look at Bayonetta and Dante in Devil May Cry 1, Dante Devil May Cry 1 is, is a jokester, but he definitely gets more serious all, over time. And he has that moment, right, where he goes, <laughs> I wanted to be the one to fill your dark soul with light. Like, he's, he's kind of, like, earnestly cheesy. Whereas I think Bayonetta is, is sassier in a way. Um, and I, I think it gives the game a completely different vibe. Like, she's so powerful that she becomes playful with it in a way. Whereas like something like Devil Trigger, that's fun and wild, but it's not like turning your hair into a giant bird and having it peck out your enemy's eyes. Like there's definitely a, a difference there in playfulness. It gives it a different vibe. Uh, it's been a long, long time since I've played this, Ben, so I have a question. Yeah. The, like, the quick time events that you do in combat, Yeah, I'm not really a huge fan of mechanics like that in games because I feel like it yeah. kind of just slows down what I'm doing to a halt and just mashing mm -hmm. a button. Do you feel it happens not often enough where it doesn't feel intrusive? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I actually really like the way that it's implemented, and I, I wish more quick time events were implemented like this. I think this is done effectively. So in Bayonetta, most of the time, right, the vast majority of the time, everything that you're doing is reading enemy attacks and dodging. It's only under special circumstances, like when you're doing a torture attack, which you have to earn, right, or a climax attack, which you have to earn, that you are doing those quick time events. So they don't really take away from anything that's happening. And unlike other quick time events, it's not like, oh, I wish I was doing that. It was like, oh, I am like spanking, I'm literally spanking this mm -hmm. enemy. And so this is a way to add like kind of a player action to that where it's like, oh, when I hit the button, she spanks him. And I think that just adds to the kind of like visceral and kinetic feeling of the game. So it's, it's sort of like oh, a time. short reward. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I, was, I was listening, I was so interested. Damn it, <laughs> kinetic spanking. <laughs> kinetic spanking. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm banking. Very important question. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, I had another one lined up to you. <laughs> wow, so many questions. Maybe we usually uh... we don't get the time warnings yeah. in the cross. Yeah, more questions. No, Is that a good don't. thing or a bad yeah, thing? Like, I don't may, know. Maybe we maybe we start up I don't know. I got cross examination now. time next time, maybe. Whoa. Whoa. I yeah. can give you I can give you the cross examine warnings too. Usually we don't do that. <laughs> um so we do have one more. We want to see the wind, the the Gotta wheel see that spin. Wheel. Yeah, so see who's gonna come up next. We're going that over to wheel. one last spin. What happens? It is actually spinning. Mm, nice. <laughs> and the winner is. Oh, please land on the black line. That would be so funny. The winner is Ian. Yeah. What happens when I remove it? When I remove it, it's just a see. It's a music CD-ROM now. Oh, sick. Just looks like that. So uh, give me one second. Let me cut back over here. We actually don't like need to say to thank you to my fans. And, uh, do we need to mute all that stuff again? Yes, please. If you can do that. Uh, I don't think you need to. Oh, okay. Uh, then uh -huh. you don't have to. I just don't want you to miss the beginning of the video. <laughs> Got it. All right. Well, I have to load it up. Um, I have to click play to queue it up. This is the, the weirdest oh, thing is well, I have okay. to hit the video and then auto play. So let me try and pause it as soon as I can. Mm, okay. mm. Careful. Like, yeah. Well, it's not playing for chat. Everyone just close your eyes. That sounded it's, like it skipped a, ahead. a form. Okay, I re oh my gosh. Come on. Uh -huh. All I heard was, all I heard was a game summer. trailer saying. So that's not a spoiler at least. All right. Uh, let me get this going and, uh, just give me a uh, give me the green light in, and uh, you I can will begin. Start it whenever you want. All right, here we go. Here we go. Huh? 
never been oh. abused, never been abused. Look. This is the story of a man named Stanley. If this all sounds like highbrow rumination, don't worry. Despite having plenty of commentary, the Stanley parable is primarily concerned with providing a good time. No! A lot of video games try to answer questions, such as how to improve storytelling, evolve a genre, or create a new genre. The Stanley Parable only raises questions through seemingly endless satire. With incisive wit, the Stanley Parable explores numerous game conventions by turning them on their head and having a good laugh at them. The probing never gets too heavy-handed and remains light-hearted enough that it's enjoyable, even if you don't care about the subtext. Both subtle and extravagant, the Stanley Parable is a delightful experiment. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. The original Stanley Parable started as a source mod in 2011. I love and that while this I'm new incarnation sure shares is. similarities with its previous self, much of it has evolved or expanded. What the 2013 version does share in common is its opening, where the impeccable Kevin Brighting, who narrates practically every step of the game, provides a bit of backstory for Stanley, a complacent office worker. Stanley, this fern will be very important later in the story. Make sure you study it closely and remember it carefully. You won't want to miss anything. <laughs> Stanley's life is a void of monotony. He shows up every day at his job only to receive orders through his computer monitor, telling him to press certain keys at certain times. This continues until Stanley eventually shuffles home, only to repeat the same excruciating tedium day after day. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. For some reason, Stanley doesn't mind his pointless life, but rather craves it. When he arrives one morning to find everyone has disappeared and he isn't receiving orders, Stanley gets paranoid and ventures out of his office cocoon to figure out what's happened. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. What comes next is a blur of surreal hilarity where the rules are always changing. The one constant is the omniscient narrator who acts as an unreliable guide. The sheer amount of things he comments on is absurd, and just when you think he's said everything there is to say, he blurts out more. It's surprising that the perpetual narration never gets tiresome, which is a credit to the game's sharp script. And here it was, the lounge. What a room, Stanley thought to himself. What a room, what a room, what a room. This is what Stanley thought. What a room. What a room, what a room. What a room. Va va voom. What a room. The script works because of how limited you are. Your only capable actions are walking, pushing buttons, and opening doors. The mechanical simplicity matches its design, which is really nothing more than a series of corridors where bits of narration trigger depending on where you go or what you interact with. But it isn't a fault. The game is constructed to remain centered on its goal, which is to provide a mirror for the player. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. What choice means in video games is the Stanley Parable's investigative focus. It mocks both how limited choices often are and how little impact they generally have. Essentially, it explores the inherent struggle between giving the player freedom while constructing a narrative. How much power do you really have when everything is predetermined? If this all sounds like highbrow rumination, don't worry. Despite having plenty of commentary, the Stanley Parable is primarily concerned with providing a good time. Plenty of jokes work well at face value and as insightful critiques. Watching a cardboard baby slowly move into a wall of flame is absurdly amusing, regardless of why it's happening. Heartless bastard. Depending on whether you spend a minute or three hours with the Stanley Parable, your impression of it will change. Just when you think you've figured it all out, the game will throw you as far off course as possible. You'll feel a bizarre motivation to uncover each of more than a dozen endings, even when the game is openly mocking you for doing so. The insults speak to a larger truth and may make you question what it means to play games at all. This introspection, however, will have you laughing the entire time. That got a bit weird back there. Well, I'd like to apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. You know what? I think what we need. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I guess.
again, whoever wrote that script did a great job. Yeah, good job. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> you timing yourself I'll, I'll start it whenever someone asks me something unless you guys just want to skip it uh, i just want to make official what game you're actually submitting for hall of grades can you answer that question <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm very confused <laughs> it's not the game i made to show the stanley parable review but oh okay the, the stanley parable oh okay, okay. It just felt like, like an appropriate way to confirmation. I was like hoping it was Stanley Dreams or Gary's Mod or something. I yeah, like, I thought oh, it was gonna be Dreams. <laughs> no, I made that all in Unreal. <laughs> nice, cool. <laughs> Unreal for Hall of Groots. Yeah, best engines. <laughs> I haven't. It kind of from what I have, I haven't played Stanley Parable. I've played Portal. Uh, is it surprising in that way in terms of, I think the surprise that Portal has borders on greatness, which is why I came up in a discussion of like Hall of Great Games. Same thing with yeah. Stanley Parable where like the surprises in there like echo that level of importance and not just like this game's hilarious because that's always where I classified it. I wouldn't necessarily, but I have not played it. So for someone who has that perspective, what uh, mm -hmm. what moved you about this? I think it 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 pulls off a similar feat kind of where it's like, uh, whereas you don't really see what happens toward the end of Portal coming necessarily. I mean, you do if you're looking behind the scenes and stuff, but like this one is funny because it basically almost tells you, it like tells you what the bit is repeatedly and then still subverts it in ways that are surprising. So, uh, which I think is a really, really successful element of this game and like impeccable writing in this game. Cause yeah, like a narration like that could so easily be trite or irritating, but it's pretty charming and funny the whole time. And yeah, I think it, I think it does kind of pull a portal. It, it, it surprises you, even though it tells you it's going to surprise you. Um, <laughs> bouncing off that. I do think this is definitely a game that not enough people paid attention to, and it is really brilliant in a lot of ways. But when I think about revisiting it now, as opposed to something like, portal um i do think it's a game that that kind of warrants multiple plays just so you can see everything and i think that's kind of what it's going for but at the same time i think once you've once you've seen that like the the act of playing it unlike something like portal isn't as satisfying where you can revisit portal years later and and still have a even if you know the twist obviously uh you can still have a blast solving the puzzles where that that's not really true for stanley parable yeah, I mean, it's certainly not as tactile as something like Portal, where it has more, like, action-based... Um, it's it's almost more similar to, like, a um, like Life is Strange or something like that. Obviously, very, very different, like, tone-wise, but, like, as as far as, like, the type of game that it is, it's, it's, it's more like a story game like that. Um, but, like, I think you say in the review, it has, like, 12 endings or something, and, like, it has, like, so many secrets it's it's not even funny so there is a lot of replayability to finding uh all of that stuff i would say it's it's somewhere between like it's not as non-interactive as dear esther or something like that um but yeah it's not as interactive in that same way as portal so it's it's somewhere in between that where it's a first person story game i guess but it, like a meta narrative uh, Ian, I will propose the same question you asked Jones earlier. Nowadays, that Stanley Parable has been so hyped, and it is, you know, the 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 trick has been revealed. Is it a disservice entering it into the Hall of Greats? I actually, <laughs> I actually think in this case the opposite might be true because, like, it's it's hard to have correct um, expectations for this game. It's hard to, like, no matter what you think of this game, you're probably, you're probably only half right, you know, <laughs> like, because it, it, it subverts itself like six times. <laughs> so, and it, it like doesn't yeah. take itself that seriously, which is nice. Cool. Yeah. What are you going to say, Ben? Nothing. I can't defend your game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, you uh, can, you wrote my <laughs> presentation yeah. uh, years ago. Yeah, what is, how about like in terms of, of length? Because if you're talking about secrets and replayability and multiple endings and a narrative type of thing, like does it f ever feel like it drags out too much or is it pretty it, succinct or how does that balance? 
it's it's pretty succinct it it doesn't overstay its welcome i would say it uh it and it also like if you want to just rush through it you can and you'll still have like a good nice experience but if if you're like me and you really want to get into the nitty-gritty and find everything uh that's there too um so i think yeah but it's not like a 30-hour game or anything oh time yay Yay! Good job, everybody! Yay. Oh, I had one more question. Oh. <gasps> See of doubt! So, I will, allies, I am uh, posting in Slack. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, the eight games, and then the link again to the submit form, just so you have that. Uh, please copy paste the game titles as I paste it. Uh, put them in there oh, unless okay. there's a typo just so okay. like it doesn't make like yeah for consistency uh, it'll make it easier uh so we are going to do the confessional phase of this where wait, say you that, that instruction again copy paste go copy to paste slack from i slack. gave you the eight i gave you the eight <laughs> nominees it. and i how i wrote them out got it, got them it. In, yeah just to clarify right. for ourselves in chat we cannot vote for our own game correct right. okay. not vote for our own game and uh we will do the come when we come back we'll have the tallies for this and again as cuba reminded us at the beginning any game that does not get any votes will be on a, a year temporary ban will not be right. allowed to be brought back and uh, do not tell the order when you go through your games in your confessional just talk about what, what you know which three games are yeah like alphabetical exactly. order would probably be a safe way to do it exactly so i am going to go to the transition scene here with our past Holograts winners, the current the current inductees, I should say. And uh the rest of you actually can just uh chill whatever. You might wanna you'll need to you'll need to not listen in as well, uh the other allies. So mm -hmm. you can and just And we take just go headphones. in the same order we I will in. communicate yeah, in Slack when start. I am done and then it will we'll do all of our communication on Slack from here until we're back as a group. So Okay. Let me pin myself. Let me make sure this works. And uh, chat, when I'm doing my conventional, you'll see the layout that we'll be using. So let me switch on over. All right. So this is uh, this just looking at you now, chat. So you're good. You see everything is good here. All right. Uh, I am going to. All right. So for my my three picks, uh, I will be placing my chips down on. Cannot tell you the order, but I will say the three games. Uh, I feel like Brad did a very good defense of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, and uh, a, a, a much a much better presentation than just simply uh, bringing. Uh, if I remember right, he either just brought the review and played the review, or just read the reviews I, I, whatever it was this time was just came from more from the heart and very good defense of it um blood even asked the question i was gonna ask about the enemies uh because uh, i thought they weren't memorable um compared to the kremlings but you know brad brad defended it very well uh i think uh, ben's presentation on bayonetta was really good um it's really hard for me to <laughs> uh like it's like bayonetta and, and dmc3 are like the two character action games that would probably go above rising in my mind so it's kind of hard to have that and uh such a good presentation and deny it any kind of votes so that's definitely going to get some my, my chips as well i think uh perhaps maybe the most impressive game on here maybe might have been yakuza zero though uh, the passion Huber brought for that was amazing. Um, I just heard so many good things about this series and that this is the one to start with and that it's such a it's such a good compliment for, for people to to give to a game along with like the high praises sung for it. I think the the defense of the the, the multiple character pres story presentations is pretty good too. So I think those are the three. The three that I get my chips are going to be Yakuza 0, uh, Bayonetta, and Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. So give me a, a sec chat while I drop those in there. <laughs> uh, sorry, this is going to take a little longer. So 
I'm sorry. I gotta make sure these work. I gotta confirm these. I'm the, I'm the guinea pig. I'm going first here, so if these don't work. I have to do something about it. Sorry. All right, let me submit. Cool. And let me just double check. Counted it. Sorry, chat. This is want to make sure all this is good before I hand it over to the others. Uh, otherwise, it's going to mess things up and we don't want to redo this. So I apologize. Uh, almost there. Almost there. Show me the spreadsheet. Let me make sure it counted. Excellent. It's working. It works. It works. All right, uh, I'm going to go back to transition, and we'll be right back with uh, the next, uh, whoever was next, I forget. All right, uh, Brandon Yo. will be next. One, one, one sec. One sec, Brandon. Let me get you set up. Sorry. Set me up. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'm only listening for this part, so give me one sec. Let yeah, cool. Pin, whatever. Pin, pin, Brad. Brad, Brandon. Jeez, I'm just losing. Uh, this is it, right? My thing. While you're doing that. All right, you you are you are good, Jones. I'm going to take off my headphones and not listen in. So just post in Slack when you're good. Submit. Boom. All right. Cool. Let's see if Damiani's muted. He's muted, right? You can't hear what I say, right? Okay, good. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you, obviously, for being a part of this uh, Hall of Greats. It is an unusual Hall of Greats that we got to do, but I just want to shout out to everybody for being patient with us as we figure out the best way to do it. See, there's a history with the Easy Allies. We've been working together for a very long time, and so obviously I get surprised by what people bring in. Um, it's kind of how I feel about Stanley Parable right now because it's like, oh, yeah, Stanley Parable is a really good game, but like, Ian's never really talked that much about Stanley Parable. He mentions it every now and then, but I was surprised, like, because that's not something where it's like, aha, yes, Ian's classic take on Stanley Parable. However, of all of these games, and I'm doing this in alphabetical order, by the way, of all of these games, I don't think I've heard anyone ally talk about their game more than I've heard Ben Moore talk about Bayonetta. Ben Moore, I remember when he, you know, first reviewed Bayonetta 2, we got into this conversation because I was like, he was just so in love with Bayonetta 2. And I'm like, wow, I didn't know this series was that good. Like I knew it was good, but I didn't know it was, you know, again, nine or above and just like, you know, something that would be considered for, for Hall of Greats. And Ben has maintained that for as long as I've known him. He's continually brought it up and continually talked about it. And Bayonetta is just not, it's not generally my cup of tea. Those types of games are not something that I will like slave over to try to get good at, but it is something that I've always recognized just how relentless that game is in terms of how it tries to impress the player. And that is something that I've at least understood and, you know, based on my limited exposure to that game, something that I can still identify with seeing, um, you know, different scenes of it and different people talk about it, different videos about it over the years. So uh, Bayonetta definitely gets one of my votes of varying importance. And being at Easy Allies is certainly being at Game Trailers over several years from several different allies. I've heard again and again and again how great. And I have played a lot of it. I didn't finish it, but... Trop Tropical Freeze is just one of those things that keeps coming up again and again because of excellence. I think it really depends on what type of games people would bring, but with um, Tropical Freeze, I always know that it is one of those excellent games. It's just like, how good are these other games that people are going to bring? And I think Tropical Freeze does edge out just in terms of how satisfying that game is. And my third game, uh, I have to put on here because of how original it is and how much I want to play that game now, even, you know, after people have been talking about it. But there's just something so wonderful and unique about Katamari Damacy. It's already been brought up for Hall of Grace, and I think that's there's a reason why, because it is so unique, so fun, so happy when it was redone on Switch. I got it. I played through all of that again and just remembered how how special of a game it is. And every now and then somebody brings something to Hall of Greats that I can just recognize, it doesn't matter how old it is, what console it came out on, how unique it is and how damn clever the person who created that had to be to really have that vision and realize it. And then it's not just rolling around. It's, it's the music and the sound effects. It's just how that generally treats each of its environments and uh, just how 
much I still enjoy playing that after all of these years. And that that just speaks a lot for me. Uniqueness means a lot to me, something that is still super fun and addicting after so many times of playing it after, you know, having, you know, that first game came out a long time ago. And I think I think it still holds up. I think it's still a lot of fun. Those other games are great. A lot of good games tonight, but those are my three. What a boom. Brad's up. Peace. Okay, give me a sec. Let me... Uh, okay, we're going to grab Brad real quick. Um, Brad, you are up. I'm here. Let me... One sec, Brad. Let me get you set up. Alright, dude, you're good to go. Just type cool. in uh, Slack when you're done. Okay. What's up, chat? Um... A lot of great games here, as always. I've had some time to think about this, so I I know what three games I'm going to pick, I'm pretty sure. Stanley Parable. I don't know anything about this game. I've never played it. Ian's presentation was crazy interesting, but I got distracted by the presentation itself, and I have no idea what this game actually is. So I'm going to have to skip, because I can't do confidence vote for a game I don't know anything about for this. Uh, Bayonetta, fantastic game. Love it. So good. Katamari Damashi blew my mind the first time I played that game. I never played anything like it. Hunt Down looks sick, man. I haven't played that game either, but that looks right up my alley. Nice 8 bit looking or Super Nintendo style shooting. Yakuza Zero, awesome game. Got me into the series. Can't vote for Donkey Kong, damn it. Uh, Journey, hell of a game. I've only played it one time. But that one time I played it was something else. And Mill Gear Rising Revenge was insane, insane action. Okay. So, okay. This is hard to pick, but my top three are going to be Yakuza Zero, Katamari Damasi, and Metal Gear Rising. That's it. That's it. I'm done, chat. See you in a bit. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Bye, chat. Okay. Thank you, Brad. Let me grab Huber. One sec, Huber. Let me, uh, let me make you it. Uh, sorry, can you talk for a sec, Huber? Talking! Uh, I don't actually hear you. Are you muted? I am not. You don't hear me? Chat. Hello, hello. Oh. Yeah, I don't hear you. I heard everyone else. You don't hear me? Not me. Chat muted. hears them? Oh, hang on, hang on. One sec, one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. Chat um, always hears me. Love you, chat. All right. Uh, go ahead, then. That's weird. I don't hear you, but you go ahead. Sweet. Night has fallen. I'm shrouded in darkness for these votes. So the three games, cool. Um, one of the games is Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Without a doubt, one of the most delightful games I've ever played in my entire life. One of the best platformers. This game is just pure fun while also being incredibly challenging and incredibly rewarding. It's just such a nice balance of fun, accessibility, and challenge. Um, and that's that's one of the main things I look for in video games. You know, it is it is such a joy, such a pleasure to play, but it also challenges you and pushes you. Uh, the soundtrack is one of the greatest in video game history. The the secrets are meaningful because you unlock legendary levels, like Brad mentioned, Bobopolis. Just what an absolute joy! Uh, do not skip it. I encourage everyone who has not played this game, even if you've never played a Donkey Kong, don't be concerned about going in any order. Just dive in. Dive in. What are you waiting for? No excuses. Uh, next up is Journey. Like Jones was saying, you know, it's, I think it is time. It is, it is time for this indie darling, this one-of-a-kind, unique experience to be in the Hall of Greats. Uh, I, I do believe it is a timeless classic. I believe, you know, whether we like it or not, games are a part of technology, and sometimes sometimes technology ages in in bad ways. You know, uh, games get worse over time because of technology. Like it is 
a factor, but I think Journey will stand the test of time and it will be a classic uh, for a, a very long time, maybe ever. Like, who, you know, obviously I can't predict 100 years from now, but I still feel like 100 years from now, a future human could pick up Journey and have an emotional response to that game. Uh, it is, it is a just, it's beautiful art. Uh, and then the final game I'm picking is, of course, Bayonetta. Some of the best third person action combat in the industry. I really liked Ben saying that it is, that it is about defense rather than offense. You know, obviously it's about both. You're kicking and punching and shooting demons by the dozens and angels, what have you. Uh, but it is just so, so good, the combat. It is absolutely top tier, masterful combat. Uh, and that's it. That's, that's, I love it. I love that game's combat so much. Of course, I love Bayonetta herself, but the combat is just so effing good. It's just so good. That's it. That's it, everybody. See you later. All right. Let's grab Dawn. One sec, Dawn. Let me, uh, I'll tell you when you're good to go. I think your mic is still muted, Dawn. Okay. I'm right, good to go. go. Uh, give me one sec. I will tell you when you're good to go. All right. Have at it, Dawn. Okay. Odele, everyone. All right, another good Hall of Greats. What do we have here? Let's go down the list very quickly. Um, okay, Stanley Parable. Wonderful presentation as always. Super clever. I love what Ian did. Um, I still don't know if I can get over the hump of actually desiring to play that game so much. It seems super fun, but it's just not my style of gameplay. And I feel like I would really enjoy playing it with maybe someone like Ian, but I don't know if I'd enjoy the actual playing the game personally for the type of gameplay it is. I did love Ian's presentation, so I may have to pass on Stanley Parable right now. Ben's presentation of Bayonetta was fabulous, I thought. I thought he really made it clear what makes that game so great. And I just thought he did a really fabulous job. I think uh, uh, Katamari, I love that game. Blood did a great job describing it as well. Another good presentation. Uh, for me, I wish there would be a new Katamari at every single system launch, launch uh, just to show us uh, what it can do in a really fun way. But ultimately, uh, some of the areas of uh, that game became too abstract for me, if that makes any sense in a game like that it's hard to be too abstract but um the replayability did wear because of that for me uh yakuza zero i think huber did a fabulous job explaining why this needs to be the entry point of yakuza for myself and a lot of people there's so many i've been wanting to get into the series for a while huber's been uh, as you can imagine trying to talk me into it I think he did a fabulous job. I mean, it wasn't just the arcade mention that maybe put it a little bit over the top, but he really makes that game look so fun and really explained why that's a great place to get into it. And I think I really will actually, he really made me want to play that game tonight. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, a polished masterpiece and Brad's presentation was fabulous. It was so much fun. It matched the tone of the game. And I think he highlighted everything great about that game. Obviously, uh, Jones, uh, journey presentation is beautiful again with that game it I, I it's great but it's for the appeal of replay value for me which is really important on a uh on a on a great hall of greats game it has to have high replay value for me and then metal gear rising was a beautiful so many good memories of being staying after hours at game trailers watching damiani play that thing oh my god some really good times i am picking bayonetta uh, Yakuza, and Donkey Kong as my three selections, okay? But a really fabulous job by everyone. Thanks for watching. All right. Let's see how well, it shakes out. All right, I believe Blood is next. 
Sucks waiting for blood to show back up. There's blood. One Can second. you hear me? Uh, you are good to go, bud. Sweet. Hello, everybody. Uh, yeah, this is an interesting one, isn't it? Like, I feel like out, out of this list, like, there's not many you could say are like obvious picks. Um, and it's funny with mine. Like, I was really, I was feeling like I was gonna have to stretch uh because i wasn't sure that my notes were going to make up all the time but then i yeah <laughs> then i was like oh i'm running short on time okay let's, let's get through this get to my joke at the end uh but for my picks um yeah so this is, yeah, this is interesting so i think yeah alphabetical order uh first of those is bayonetta uh which i think i think is it's it's interesting place because i feel like it's a lot of refinement more than uh, originality but i think it's refined those things so well that combat is so good uh the fact that like you can use loading screens to practice uh and there's so many different options for bayonetta is really good and then yeah just that over the top those big crazy over the top moments uh that it just it just you know if you describe so many of those scenes they just seem utterly ridiculous uh and i think that you know it's a really a really strong strength uh to that game uh next on my alphabetical list is uh journey as jones mentioned i've brought this before i'm gonna put my vote in for it um you know uh, uh, the yeah just the emotional payout of that game is really strong uh the idea of working together with a stranger is really strong it's yeah it's it's a really cool game the music is absolutely phenomenal it is you know like I didn't. I didn't know Austin Wintry's name before that soundtrack, right? Uh, it's. It stands out. It. It. It puts uh, that game, that developer, that composer, you know, all of it. It just you know puts them on the map. Um, and then uh, kind of maybe the surprise pick or or so because I haven't played it as uh, Stanley Parable. Uh, I feel like there's just something, uh, yeah, similarly to Journey. I think there's something unique about this game. Um, not that there aren't other narrative first-person adventure games, but yeah, there there's a playfulness there. There's definitely a sense. Uh, out of all the games on this list that I haven't played, uh, I think that's the one that I'm most like. I should I should play that. <laughs> I should play that. I should see what that's about. I should see why uh, so many people have been recommending it since before it came out um and uh why i have you know not done that when it's such a short game you know well it's like you know like yak is it like it's a, it, that's a longer game it's an investment but stanley parable i can get through that in you know probably a night or two right from the from the way it's described so yeah those those will be my three votes in alphabetical order uh and we will be up next with ben All Hello. All right, let me get Ben set up. All right, you're good to go, Ben. My light is overexposed. <laughs> I look like I'm going to tell a campfire story. Oh, well, this will have to do. Um, so first game I want to talk about is Yakuza 0. Um, I think it's a game that's long overdue for Hall of Greats. I think it, it really is a phenomenal story. And I, I think one of my favorite stories of the generation. And it just nailed so much about Yakuza. Like, prequels are hard to do because prequels kind of feel like they're just desperately trying to justify something you already like. And they can feel a little thin. Whereas Yakuza Zero doesn't feel that way at all. It's not trying to justify anything. It's just it's just great in its own right and a, and a perfect entry point for people coming new into the series. Um, and man, it really went for things like the dual storylines, the styles. So much is just fantastic. Um, I also want to talk about Katamori. Man, we you don't get games that are that creative that often. Like it. It's really a visionary game, and it's it's just built perfectly around this really simple idea. Um, 
And I, I don't know how you can play that game and not have a great time. And Katamari works on so many different levels, like it, in terms of style, it, it's just it's just aesthetically perfect. Like it's, it's just so consistent and out there and wild and fun um, in terms of gameplay. It's so unique and special and easy to pick up, but hard to master. Uh, it really just kind of gets to the heart of what video games are about. Um, and there's actually kind of this surprisingly deep and sweet story going on. Like if you, if you actually pay attention, um, kind of about like the innocence of childhood in a, in a really cool way. Um, hell yeah, Katamari. And Dying on a Tropical Freeze. If only we could get platformers that were this consistently good. I know a lot of people turned away from it because it was on Wii U originally, or they were mad that Retro wanted them to work on Metroid or whatever, but I think all of that completely melts away when you actually play the game. Like, it's in a lot of ways, it's just as good as anything Nintendo has ever done. Like it's, it controls so well. The level design is so perfect, um, masterful. It's a masterful game. It did not get enough credit from us when it originally came out, and I feel, I continually feel bad about that. Great game. Okay, that's it. Damiani. Hello. Hello. All right, and we just have Ian left. Hi. Ian set up in just a sec. <laughs> Too low for me. Uh, why don't I see Ian? Uh, I'm in the top middle now. It moves when we all turn our cameras off. Weird. Weird. There we go. Sorry, Ian. My bad. I forgive you. You are good to go, Ian. Thank you. Okay. Uh, alphabetical order. Thinking Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze is going to get one of my votes just because it's real good. Solid platforming, charming, great look, beautiful music, just an all around fantastic game. And then uh, Alphabet. Then it was down between Hunt Down because I really liked Don's presentation and uh, Journey because Journey's just, you know, Journey uh i think if i'm thinking hall of greats you know greatest of all time uh journey edges it out <laughs> you know uh hunt down looks beautiful but i haven't played it yet and it looks like fun um but i don't know if it's hall of greats material nothing in the presentation proved that to me i guess so uh maybe next time don i'll i'll vote for that one if you bring it back uh, and then my final game, near the end of the alphabet, Yakuza 0. Uh, the time we spent playing that at Easy Living was a real blast. And I just saw how good the story and writing were in that game. Uh, and it looks like fun to play also. Um, I played it for a little bit, I think, at Easy Living maybe. But um, yeah, Yakuza 0 is really good. I was immediately enthralled. So those are my votes. In alphabetical order, I will say done to the guys, and we will see how long it takes them to come back. All right, let me go Hello. back to the transition scene real quick. Everyone should uh, rejoin. Hello. 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 Unpin video. Unpin Did video. Did you say hello? No, I said hello. <laughs> uh, just waiting for so young Brad friends. to come back. Also, Labyrinth. let me count. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have eight submissions now. Okay. Sweet. That is correct. Okay. Uh, we will be returning back now. We are on the group shot.
I will now go through and tell ideas. So you want to have some nice conversations while oh, yeah. Hello, I do Poppy. this? Nice conversations. Hello, Poppy. Nice I can finish my list if you want to kill time. Sure. <laughs> Dice, uh, mice, oh my God. signs, erasers, <laughs> batteries, like, what list? Oh, thermometers, manga, <laughs> swords, blocks, butterflies, this be the next soda cans, magnets, fireworks, golf balls, water guns, toothbrushes, shrimp milk, gumbo, hair dryer, sandwich. hammers, walkie talkies, <laughs> trash cans, stoves, refrigerators, scooters, and old ladies. And that's not even half of it. <laughs> that was a big list. Pine nut, PS2 pistachio hardware, too. That's pretty nut, impressive. natural, all natural, white pistachio, pistachio nut. nut. Uh, hey, hey the PS2 nut. was a beast, man. Yeah. 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 They were all not very detailed, though, I guess, in that game. Yeah. The emotion you can tell what they engine. were, though. Emotion engine. Emotion. I think I own, like, three PS2s. I'm trying mm. to think of the <laughs> console I own the most of. I just bought the PS2 again so many times. It was just so... So cost effective for like all it did. I had like four 360s because uh, oh, what happened? Yeah. I, everyone at Red Game Trailer's like selling theirs. Yeah, like my power went out on one and like they all, oh, the disk drive. That's what kept breaking. The disk drive kept getting. The 360 stuck. started like right when we empty MTV. So I was just a swimming in those. I remember they were just everyone had 360s place, everywhere. Yeah. Dude, I remember the <laughs> library. I was like, did I bring that in? Where'd it go? Well, I'll just take this one. Like, <laughs> what's hilarious is the library had like this box full of hard drives. Because oh, every time like a oh, debug unit drives. would break, uh, like we'd have to send it back, but we would send it back without the hard drive, you know, and then we get a new one in with a hard drive. Yeah. <laughs> it's, good, it's a good scam you had going there, blood. Yeah. <laughs> Scammed. I think I had three red ring of deaths. Wow. I yeah, I, had, I think I had two. Yeah. I thought one, PS4s maybe. broke a lot. But, but yeah, the funny PS4s. thing is though, you say scam, like Ben, like you couldn't do something with some of those hard drives. They were so small. They were so ridiculously small. Yeah. Like I, I, I remember there being like a four gigabyte or so, something like really yeah. like why does this exist kind of size well they sold it there was a skew of the 360 where you didn't get a hard drive and you could do like the memory card the memory card yeah. yep yeah. i had a memory <laughs> card and a desk that i'm like what do i do with this yeah wow. we never we we actually i think we used it for like some security features or like some publishers like you had to put like a specific thing onto the memory card unit and stick the memory card in and then you also had to put a code in after the memory card like it's craziness see ben you try to on steer a playstation way i'm going to bring it back down at right back around to xbox every time let's talk every xbox yeah. <laughs> talking talk xbox, xbox thursday yeah we are uh, let's go you hear there's like an hour yeah. post show now what? Oh my God. <laughs> what a Hell yeah. show for an hour and a post show going Dude, on. Dude, they'll play Halo more. I, 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 hear, I hear they're flying people out to the ring itself. <laughs> the Halo <laughs> ring? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Giving so away more for Halo. Holy shit. We're going to yeah. see it Thursday. Yo, Halo 3 on PC. Beautiful. Mm. Yeah? Good. Beautiful. How's the, Beautiful. the mouse and keyboard stuff? Beautiful. Because it was yeah. bad on, what was it, Reach when it came out? I mean, oh, I'm, really? I'm playing. I'm yeah. playing the campaign with mouse and keyboard, and oh, that's having good. a great time. Like the controller, like auto aim was insane, so it's better to play on a controller. Mm. I like it. Very nice. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Halo Three. Can't wait to see Skyrim. <laughs> I, I'm gonna be so mad if they show Skyrim again. It, <laughs> after that, after the betting special aired, my newest issue of PC Gamer. Guess what's on the cover? Skyrim. Skyrim. Yes. Swear to God. Top on the games cover. Of all time. Cover. Top PC games. <laughs> escape your world. You can't escape. So you can't escape this game. You can't. You can escape your world, but you can't. Escape Skyrim. Oh, someone brought up a good point. It's gonna be like a ten-year anniversary coming up. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh no! A <laughs> That's next Skyrim. year. Yeah. But they could announce it. Stop it, Todd. <laughs> Stop it, Todd. <laughs> that buy it again meme makes me laugh. Just him in the red with the shaky hands. Buy it again when he's all angry. Like that. I whenever I need a laugh, I can just pull that out. It's so funny. I already bought it, Todd. All right. And I, un and I unapologetically love Skyrim. I could easily bring Skyrim. I could argue Skyrim for Hall of Greats any day of the week. I won't. There's nothing wrong with Skyrim. But I could. I won't, he says. <laughs> I <won't. laughs> but I could. Uh -oh. Okay, Damiani's ready. One sec, actually. Oh no! What if ready. what if Jones I, brought Skyrim and Damiani just muted him, but we none of us reacted to that, and we just let Jones 
pitch Skyrim for five minutes of silence? You ask me questions. I'm like, I brought that up. I did a whole minute on that topic yeah. specifically. You're like, you clarify oh, it, Jones, because I didn't. And then you meet me while I'm answering. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm ready. Sorry. Cool. I sorted only one column and I was like, wait a second. Those votes, when the vote numbers change. All right. I have the final tallies here. Nice. So well done, we, do the, we do this in reverse order until the top three. Then we will reveal first place. And then oh. it'll be the final reveal will be who won in the second and third place for the most tension and drama possible for these types of reveals. So I did bring Skyrim and it got banned chat. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's that's another one I brought. You're I have like two bands. FTL, FTL and Skyrim. I have was a lot trolling? of bands. I thought he was trolling. I was actually trying to pan it wasn't trolling, I was pandering. I thought it'd get in because I thought everyone loved it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think he was trolling. Oh. I was trying to bring I was trying to get the first Western game. That's even us. worse. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. All right, uh, so we do have bad news. There will be one game that has oh. there's one game that receives zero votes and will be uh -oh. ineligible to be brought back for a year. And unfortunately, that game with zero votes this time is hunt down. Mm. Oh, <laughs> Don, showing how it's done. So harsh. I almost gave it one. It's because no one's played you. it, Don. Damn it. <laughs> but True. You, you played, played it. it. You but played I couldn't it. give it the votes. I couldn't give it the votes. Yeah. I, I, gave it take, I take 100% uh, responsibility. Presentation was last No, Don. I love the presentation. Don, you know what you did? Very successfully. 100%. I have to play that game now. You, you yeah. sold that like... I was yeah, and, and, and that was a game victory. that I was curious yes. about, but like yeah. big just time watched. victory. And you said you're like you're like oh the editing was kind of slow, like that's why I was just on the edge of my seat. I was like oh my god, you can just grab a shotgun and then hide behind the wall there. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So unfortunately, yes, Hunt Down will not be eligible. I take for, full responsibility for one year. <laughs> I'm sorry, Hunt Down. So sorry, Hunt Down. <sighs> so valiant effort done. Next up with just one vote. Whoa. So averting the dreaded one year ineligibility. So with one vote coming in in second to last, the Stanley Parable. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Seems about right. That was my vote. <laughs> Thanks, Blood. The, the Blood War saved it. Okay. <laughs> saved, oh. saved. We're saved. Saved. Blood War really saved Really awesome it. presentation, Ian. Shout out. Yeah, yeah that was an amazing Shout presentation. Out. If I can figure out how to export games from Unreal, maybe I'll put it on my Itch.io. Nice. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> Coming in third to last place with two meager votes. Wow. Meager? Two meager votes <laughs> of really disappointment. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Hold Metal on. Gear Sol Metal Gear Rising is. Revengeance. Okay. There it is. Uh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Fades. Yeah. Than got Thanos snapped. I blame, Konami, I blame Konami for this. <laughs> Dude, that was, Konami, that was me, this, man. That was completely Konami. Brad is the only person who... Rules of nature! Rules of nature. Rules of nature. nature. <laughs> believing, believe in that. It's not the same right. when Ben's not it's peeking, so, saying it. So, true. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the, yeah, that turn my mic back up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was Konami's fault. Uh, coming in fifth place with four votes. Ooh. Katamari Damashi. Uh, Katamari. All right. Great Damn game. it. Damn it. Here's your, here's your final four. Yeah. That so better. I put my vote down on that. Coming in fourth place. So just missing the cut for the top three here with six votes. Unfortunately, Journey must journey oh, oh. into the sunset. Hey. Oh. Six, six better than it did last year. I thought for sure it was going to be Bayonetta. Wow. That was okay. a few sure. years ago. So here are your top right, three, Yakuza zero. zero, Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Three, Freeze, sorry, and Bayonetta. So, games. Wow. Our Everyone first wins. place, the winner with the most votes, so the first place, one of two to be inducted into our Hall of Greats with 14 total chips, Donkey Kong Country, Tropical yes, Freeze. Yes, dude. Uh, wow. Yes. Finally. Second Got chances her. raised from the dead. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. David <laughs> Wise. Wow. All right. So Can we far, end the stream with a tune Ooh. from that uh, game? I think that'd be a <laughs> great way to... Sure. Sure. <laughs> so, second and third place. 
separated by three chips. So it was a 12 to 9 chips. 12 for second, 9 for third place. So our second inductee coming in second place. Uh, Yakuza 0. Oh, Whoa. shit! Which means oh, totally Bayonetta falls short. Bayonetta falls short, comes in at third, robbed. Kamiya, just, Kamiya, the masters of action just being robbed left and right tonight. <laughs> Kamiya, Kamiya is hyped that Yakuza is in. He's not That's upset true. At all. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> That's a feel good I, entry right there. I did not expect it. Damn. So. Yeah. Those are my, Yakuza was my three and Donkey Kong was my two. Oh, nice. Yakuza Sick. was my three, yeah. Uh, ben Bayonetta was my three. Was Brandon three. Jones, my man. <laughs> well, you know what I said, Ben? And I just went well, just across the board. I just think this goes a long way. Uh, you've had the same opinion about Bayonetta as long as I've known you. Like you've been like every t- anytime that comes up, you were just like that. Everybody, you know, you're you're so passionate about that, and so I that consistency I respect a ton. So I'll always I'll remember Ben almost giving Bayonetta two a ten out of ten, dude, getting me hyped. Yeah, <laughs> it was a close call. Had to yeah. pump the brakes. They made same him. thing with two. Yeah, I just remember you at the time. I was like, that is that guy likes that game. Well, what was funny about Bayonetta <laughs> too is that it's the only time where. Uh, you and Blood were like, 9.8, are you sure? Like, Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> 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 so right. Damn. The maximum game are you sure? score. <laughs> Hell maximum yeah. Game Hell yeah. Hall, yeah. Hall of Greats from home, everybody. Yeah. 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 Ani, Ani. Thank you, Donnie. Right. Yeah. I'm so, that was really close. Because yeah, I, I, I did Tropical Freeze. I get three chips. I always mm-hmm. reveal this. Three chips of Tropical Freeze, mm-hmm. two to Bayonetta, and one to Yakuza 0. Ah. So. My one was Journey. I gave three to Journey yes. and uh, two to Bayonetta. Three to Tropical. Oh, no one else Sorry. voted for Journey because I got six. Oh, okay. See I voted well, for Journey. I gave two to Journey, Jones. Three. In the back of my mind, I was thinking about. Oh, I think you said Journey was your one. Never mind. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. I gave that makes sense then. That's only three one. Three to Yakuza yeah. Zero, uh, two to Katamari, and one to Tropical Freeze. All right. All right. Got to work I on had, Brad and Ben for Journey. I got think it. I had three got to Yakuza, two. To Revengeance and one to Katamari. Mm-hmm. Blood, you're the one who saved Stanley Parable. Mm-hmm. Saved it, yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I was torn on. You need to play it. Go last stage. chip to oh, hunt so down good, yeah. Yakuza. I, so know, I, was, I was worried I about hunt down. hunt down. Damn it, Don. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I was going to vote for Hunt Down, but I was like, Huber will give it the one. Ah, it's that's okay. I'm just yeah. getting on my uh, Hunt Down grandstand. This isn't going to be the last you're going to hear. It may <laughs> oh, not wow. be able to, I may not be able to pitch it in the Hall of Greats, but I'll be out on the street corner screaming. About <laughs> <it>. <laughs> it's a good game. Well, that it's is. Good. Those are your two inductees for this Hall of Greats. Yakuza mm-hmm. Zero, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, joining the ranks of the greats. Um, you guys covered pretty much with the schedule stuff, so is anything else to, to wrap it up before we uh, sign off here? Thursday, Xbox betting special. Go watch it. Yes. Uh, amazing please, betting special. Shout please. out to, to Don and, and Huber, obviously, but Don putting a lot of work in to get everybody. Yeah. And uh, lot, lots of people on the approving end. Uh, and uh, that just uh, wanted to get that out there as early as possible because who knows what's going to happen or leak before Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Started like one thing while we were putting it together. It was like, oh, 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 no. It did ruin it. We can still go. Um, but uh, that's going to be so much fun. That's definitely going to color our perspective on watching that on Thursday. But uh, nice. lots of other fun shows and streams. Some yeah. feel-good uh, bets. Hunting Huber tomorrow morning. Season uh, finale on Patreon. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Episode six public and last episode Seven. on Patreon. Oh, right, right, right. Is that the old Brandon Jones Brandon episode? Brandon Jones. Yeehaw, baby. Yeehaw. <laughs> it, gets, it goes places, this episode. It's, <laughs> it's bonkers. Yeah. Bonkers episode. It was a lot of fun to cut. Um, yeah, Mike and Mike are going to be playing uh, Destiny 2 some more. Yes. Past then... all the bloody tutorial stuff. So. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, yeah, nice. I was telling everyone, people are excited that we can finally have a whole a session with us being able yeah. to play together. Hell but uh, it will be cut short by an hour, though, because, you know, as we, I think, forgot if you said it, but we're going to be reacting. We're no, playing no, Smite. No. No. The, no, the yeah. anime, <laughs> play anime live. Bandai Namco. Uh, Bandai Namco. Boruto, Huber. Why are you looking so down? <laughs> yeah. Boruto. Dude, it, I hope it comes. Boruto Ninja Storm, dude. Let's go. <laughs> uh, uh, Deadly Premonition 2 is also continuing tomorrow night. 
Mm-hmm. Night, 9 p.m. Don and I, Ben, are you in for that too or no? I think I'm out tomorrow night, unfortunately. All right. We have to get the Deadly Premonition 2 review out. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're a busy boy right now. So Don yeah. and I will keep going on Deadly Premonition 2. Something tells me we're about to hit a controversial part that has probably not yet been rewritten. So we'll uh, see how that goes. Uh, I think it has. Here. I know they had an update. Has it? Did, did he update it? Patch, yeah. They did have an update. Oh. Yeah. Wait, did you actually change, rewrite but... it that quickly? Mm-hmm. He said it's he was just one scene. All it, they talk with one scene. diverse okay. consultants and rewrite some stuff. So hopefully that's better. Stay tuned. Um, but out. yeah, that review is almost ready to go. So that uh, will be coming down uh, just in the next couple of days. Well, we okay. st- it still has to be edited, but yes. Yeah. yeah. Gotta, I got to cut that video someday. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> um, and as we said, Xbox is going for a pretty long time uh thursday morning after that um actually during that huber syndrome will go live <laughs> uh, but after that ben's going to be playing uh persona 5 royal uh, and then uh, you guys are going to check out rocket arena yes we wow. have one. yeah that's right rocket yes arena. should be going trolling. in blind i've not played at all yet have yep. you, you guys haven't have touched it right? nope nope and then damiana you got friend code recorded uh, uh, no, I actually make it. Oh. I didn't move it on the schedule. Actually, I, I, I mean, you could say it here. I have to make a note. Uh, we have to, I have to push that back due to a guest, actually. Got it. So, um, there might not be an episode that goes up this week. There might be an episode next week and the, and then back on schedule the week after, uh, just because of that, because I already planned that. But, I mean, Got the next it. episode is already like we have it all planned out and stuff just need it to happen. Uh, so that'll, that'll probably happen unfortunately next week because of the delay, but I think it'll be worth it. I think it'll be good. Um, sorry, were you doing like, where were we in the schedule? Sorry. Didn't oh, so yeah. So, uh, he was checking out neon abyss on Friday mm-hmm. and then, uh, we got the podcast for patrons Friday, animal crossing Island hop Saturday morning. Whee. Uh, and then uh, Blood Pact, uh, which I'll be recording uh, later this week, will go up on Easy Allies Play Saturday afternoon. Uh, we, uh, yeah, I, I guess I can go ahead since the vote is in. Uh, checking out a game called Milk Made of the Milky Way that is on my Switch. Okay, oh, my. interesting title there. Apparently, is a good game. Um, so okay. yeah, we'll see what that's all about. It is interesting sounding for sure. <laughs> I want to see this. It is not on the schedule, but also the other half of the reason why I can't do the episode of Frank I want to do this week. I've not finished Future Connected. It's been so damn busy lately, uh, mm. and I was playing Ghost of Tsushima. I haven't finished Future Connected, so I can't talk about Future Connected until I finish it. Uh, ah. Halfway through it. I'm halfway through it. Uh, mm. So either Friday evening or Saturday after uh, Saturday in the evening, I will be doing that. I will be finishing up. I'll stream the finale of Future Connected so I can have that wrapped up. Oh, cool. uh, and at some point, I will resume my Ghost of Tsushima playthrough. Just really busy week this week. Not have a lot, don't have a lot of time for it. So that will be coming back. Uh, if not, this sometime this weekend, next week. Very cool. And I'm trying to see where I've got the list. Um. Oh, we might have to figure out what next group stream is, right? Because Rogue Legacy Two got delayed. Oh yeah. So we'll have Last. to talk that over. Well, we have a meeting coming up. Yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, perfect time. Uh, be sure to go to easyallies.com and click on that merch button. We got this shirt now. We live today on Rooster Teeth. And it's doing well, I think. So please yeah. please purchase it. Uh, yeah. And if you can't <laughs> purchase really it nice. today and you need to wait for your next paycheck, that'll that'll help too. Keep those sales rolling. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Meter it out so that Rooster Teeth is impressed with us. Yeah. <laughs> and we can make more shirts. <laughs> Thanks for All watching right. tonight, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for, everybody. Again, everything, Damiani. Ton of work tonight. Thanks. For please sharing. leave. Yes, please leave feedback uh, on Patreon or wherever else everyone leaves feedback. We'll check it out. Um, we'll try and work it into the next Hall of Great. So, so thank you for all your input on that. Woo. And hope you enjoyed it. And we will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.